Welcome to another season of live football on Bar TV Sports from the nation's capital. It's FFA Cup qualifying night from Everlast Enclosed. Football lives in the suburbs, as they say, and we certainly got a match-up between two teams who have a story passed at state league level, Brindabella Blues and the Narrow Bunda Bulls. I'm Russ Gibbs, your commentator for this evening. Joining me for this first match of the season is Tuggeranong United head coach Mitch Stevens. Mitch, great to be at Caldwell, great to be at Everlast Enclosed. Absolutely. Thank you very much for having me, Russ. I'm pretty excited about this fixture. Two teams that played in the uh, MPL Cup 2 the last year. It was called the Capital League then and finished 7th and 8th. There was three points between them. The Blues just edging out Narrabunda. Two tight matches between them last year. Obviously a lot of water under the bridge since last season and uh, changes in personnel. But on paper, there doesn't look to be too much between the two sides. I think they're going to be very, very similar. And this time of the year, such an early match of this nature, it's going to be hard to tell exactly what, what you're going to get. So, uh, like I said, either way, it's going to be very, very exciting. And on paper... I think we're going to be seeing a cracking game. Two teams, as I said, who've not been on Bar TV before, live on Bar TV Sports. And uh, we're here at the Brindabella home ground. The lights will be on from 7 o'clock. And uh, the canteen over the, over the far side will be doing a roaring trade, I'm sure, in, with uh, snags and what have you. And it's the magic of the cup, Mitch. It's the magic of the cup. And I, I can't help but notice that the uh, Brindabella faithfuls have moved the cop from one side of the pitch to the other, which is exciting. It's not often you see that, is it? They've actually grabbed the bleachers on the far side there that you probably just had your shot at the moment, and they carried it around the field and put it on the far side, probably just to get the last of the summer sunshine. I think so, and maybe a little bit closer to the barbecue and beers, maybe. Probably a good idea. The uh, two benches will be in front of us. We're going to have a quick look at the two sides while they warm up on the field. Starting with Brindabella Blues, Mac McDonald in goal. They'll play four at the back. Josh Gunter, Chris Ruiz, Stephen Klug and Bensa Afiabo. Three in midfield, Michael Saravolo, Dylan Alexandra Ridley and Zach Cosatini. And three up front, Zach Lawrence, John O'Toole and Jamie Taylor. So a side there with some uh, names that played at Premier League level and some youngsters as well. It's a good mix. It's a great little mix. I'm, I'm quite interested to see exactly what Bensa Afiabo is like at left back because He's a wonderfully talented player, and to have someone like that with his passing range coming out from that position, I mean, that would be definitely one area to watch if uh, you are Narrabunda. The missing Tom Hurst suspended. He was sent off in the last match of the season in the Capital League. Um, will they miss his energy and his goals? Oh, dev- maybe less so energy now. Tommy's not as fit as he once was, but he's a quality player, and uh, there's no doubt he'll, uh, he'll be missed uh, today's fixture. The Narrabunda Bulls, they line up with Mihailis Theoharidis in goal, four at the back for them as well. Adrian Russell, Nassis Skuros, Zane Wurchon and Shane Hajduk. Their midfield three, Yuji Matsula, John Kadapanagos, Jesse Ganton up front, Matt Atkins, Duncan Harrington and Nick Mihalakis. Pretty good side there from, for them as well, the Bulls, uh, with their, their good mix of youth and experience also. Yeah, and a lot of familiar names um, for anyone who uh, is familiar with Canberra Olympic. There's a lot of guys there that served the club so well for so long. Um, so there's no doubt that uh, that side, again, extremely competitive. And um, again, it's that time of the year. It'll be interesting to see what, what exactly they've been working on and what they can pull together. We need a result tonight, so we are going to have a look at the benches as well. We could go the full 120 minutes plus penalties if we need to. Uh, for Brindabella Blues, Danny Babich, their top scorer last season. Jacob Leonard, Curtis Schaefer and Somali Mohammed. Zach James, the substitute goalkeeper. A couple of names on there that you might be familiar with. Mitch Somali Mohammed's played in the Premier League with Woden, Western, uh, Woden Valley as they were then. And Danny Babich, who's been around a few clubs but has that impact that he can score goals. And scores wherever he goes. Um, you know, Danny's... Not getting any younger, but he's like you said, he's one of those guys that's always had a nose for it, and uh, he'd be a massive impact if he can come on and provide something, if, if need be. In true state league style, we asked him off air whether or not he'll be an impact sub, and he said maybe just a sub. A, just a non impact sub. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see how he goes there. Looking at the Narabunda Bulls bench Liam Boyle, Dimitri Mialakis, Jeremy Salah, Brett McCauley, and Billy Mulakis. They're missing Alex Bell Perrier, their number one goalkeeper. He's been caught into state. He was hoping to come back and be on the bench, but he can't be here this evening. That's a big loss for them, isn't it? That's significant. We, uh, the, the side that I'm with, Tuggeranong United, played Narabunda in a pre season fixture last year, and Alex was truly outstanding. and the performance was would fit any MPL one side. So not having him, well, does it? Yeah, what does it do to their chances? It, it will have to have an impact. I saw him in goal maybe a few seasons ago against Canberra FC in a Federation Cup game, and they went down five or six nil. But if it weren't for Alex Belperio, it would have been several more. 
a, a natural number one. He, he really he gets it. His positioning is naturally very good. Fantastic reflexes and, and a top guy to boot. So uh, even that communication, you can't underestimate the value of a, of a really good goalkeeper uh, and the organisational skills they bring to uh, to the team. In saying that, I watched Mihalis Theoharidis warming up and he looks very agile and looks like a good replacement. I'm sure he'd do his club proud. Uh, he will be excited for the opportunity for such a big game and yeah, it's cliche, but when those lights are turned on and it's, you know, these midweek fixtures, everyone is ready to go. We're very lucky in the position that we're in, uh, myself more than you perhaps, Mitch, in that we get to follow this from start to finish. But for this clubs, this is a huge night. It's difficult to, to state the impact that this kind of game has on these clubs. The winner of this will play Canberra FC, <laughs> last year's treble winners in the next round. And that is a huge fixture for them as well. That's a big biscuit and a big incentive for them to go out there and do the business. Oh, it, it's so exciting. And that's what these clubs thrive off. And, you know, the, t you know, the introduction of promotion and relegation, obviously coming in the, in the next couple of years, really give something, some incentive to play these clubs and they, they want to test themselves against the best and uh, like I said, knowing Canberra FC is up next is very, very exciting for the winner. This is one of four uh, preliminary round ties, if you like, round three it officially is in the FFA Cup jargon. Southern Tablelands take on UC Pumas, Wagga City Wanderers take on White Eagles from Western Malonglo play Canberra City. We will be in Kudamandra on Saturday for Wagga City versus White Eagles, which will be interesting. Elsewhere, the uh, round four draw, of course, I'd mentioned that the Blues and the Bulls, whoever wins this goes to Canberra FC. The winners of the Southern Tablelands Pumas play Gungarland United. Belconnen await the winners of Western Malonglo Canberra City. World and Western Wanderers, wait, Walker City Wanderers or the White Eagles. Then, of course, there's the four fixtures that we do know of. Riverina Rhinos versus ANU, Tigers versus Panthers, Canberra Olympic versus Queenian City. And your team, Mitch, handed a tough one. Tuggerang United against O'Connor Knights. Yeah, extremely tough. Um, we, we keep talking about that preparation. We, you know, we don't have a lot of intel yet on those sort of sides. Um, despite, you know, we... Thankfully, I've, I know a little bit about Miro and uh, and the charges he's put together, but it is it, it is tremendously difficult to, to prepare the guys tactically for that game. It's a case of getting your own sort of side sorted and going from there. And that's scheduled for Greenway on the 31st of March, is that right? I believe so. I think so. On that day. Half past four kickoff there, so that's it. Be interesting. Referees this evening: Shane Lyson Smith is in the middle. He's assisted by Jai Liras and Liam O'Rourke. Big one for them too early in the season, I'd imagine too. Yeah, referees, just like the players and coaches, need pre-season, so um, it's a good fixture for them. But again, they, I'm sure they'll be motivated and excited, especially as we, we can see more and more people starting to wander in into the ground and, and get excited for this match. As the shadows lengthen across Everlast Oval, we wait to kick off in the first match of the FFA Cup between Narrabunda Bulls, uh, Narrabunda Bulls and the Brindabella Blues. This field as well, Mitch, uh, it's been around for a long time, but it's had some significant work put through it. Almost half a million dollars worth of investment, including $400,000 on the lights. Kenny Al Club president from the Blues was telling me beforehand the, the fence was a very, very expensive 80K for that as well. And 10K for the goals. And, you know, what they've got is a beautiful little suburban venue. It's lovely. And looking at those trees across there, the mountains in the background, I mean, I think we're in a, a premier little spot. And once this pitch, with a, with a little bit more work, it certainly won't happen quickly. But when it does, this is going to be one of the premier venues in Canberra, I believe. Incidentally, if you can hear a rumble in the background, that'll be the generator that's helped making all this happen tonight. We're perched up here with Daniel, the cameraman, and uh, on top of a scissor lift, it's uh, a bit wobbly. So if it does shake a little bit, it's probably Mitch just getting a bit excited. Yeah, no Mexican waves, please, Russ. <laughs> Narrowbound Bulls will be in the white shirts and the blue shorts, and we'll by the blues, as their name suggests, in all blue with the yellow trim just getting their pre-match team shot for posterity. Head coach Jeremy Butler, who incidentally is suspended today, unable to uh, take part in proceedings, serving the second of a three-game ban, he tells me, for being a little bit vociferous towards match officials last season. Over-enthusiastic, perhaps. <laughs> and Johnny Zalonato, the head coach of the Narrabunda Bulls. And yeah, two, two great Canberra personalities. They love their football. They put a lot of time and effort into their... Uh, respective clubs and you know you see that with the players and the performance they put out they're going to be two really highly motivated groups and yeah like I said it'll be very good to watch so we await kickoff just running a little over the referee about to call the teams together difficult one perhaps Nick but uh, Mitch but who do you fancy I would if you're going to make me pick, I would lean slightly to Brindabella. 
Home ground advantage? Home ground advantage. Uh, they look like uh, you know, a very similar group to last year. Not a lot of changes, and um, I think they'll be ready to go. For what it's worth, the two matches last season in round uh, seven at Canberra, a goal from Nick Caggiano saw Narabunda home 1-0 over the Blues, and they met again in round 16 in Curtin, where it was a 1-1 draw. A Joshua Gunter home goal for the, for the Bulls. Stephen Klug scoring for Brinda Bella. And John O'Toole, who's playing up front today, was sent off in that match suggests that that was a little bit feisty and we might get the similar scenario this evening no doubt about it with so much on the line both sides will be giving everything but uh, it'll be good to see how John O'Toole goes he's another former MPL player played for Tuggeranong Olympic and Monero and uh, yeah, again an outstanding player at this level of the game such is the transient nature of course of, of state league football around the country that both clubs leading goal scorers. Danny Babich from Brindle Better Blues on the bench today and Nathan Duck from Narrabun who got nine goals for them last season. He's moved into state now to the Gold Coast so they'll miss his impact. Yeah, he's got a real nose for goal. Nathan Duck, um, I've worked with him previously as well and it's a, it's a loss. Nine goals at this level, you know, is hard to replace. It'll be interesting to see how they've done it but there's certainly some impressive new names in the Narrabunda ranks. As we await the coin toss, both sides will be keen to get this one underway a little bit of nerves you'd imagine at this stage with the cameras here not used to it and like you said reasonable crowd a glut of Brindabella fan, fans on the right of the Everlast marquee over there on the far side and maybe it's an advantage for go these guys that you know they've had work today and they haven't been able to think whole and soul about the fixture uh, and the magnitude of it but that can also play the other way which is if you've had a, a very busy day with work you might not be at 100 percent that's exactly it. I mean all these guys none of them are professional they do this for the love of the game at this level the first step perhaps towards FFA Cup glory they can dream <laughs> both the Brindabella Blues and the Narrabunda Bulls for at least another 120 minutes it's the magic of the FFA Cup we are shortly underway at Everlast Oval and it will be John O'Toole for the Blues who will start this intriguing cup fixture we walked across the field beforehand looks in good nick maybe the grass a little bit long just a touch long, and uh, those goal mouths are certainly a little bit worn, but we are being very picky here. I think it's going to be a perfect setting for a great game. Shane Lyson-Smith has the whistle to his mouth, just waiting for his assistants to be ready after checking the goal nets. The first meaningful action of the 2019 Capital Football season is underway with the Blues attacking the goal to our left in this first half. Early touch for Afiabo. Looked for too long, but it's easily picked up there by Adrian Russell. That's the exact pass that I was talking about, Russ, pre-game, that he'll get them better that and he'll them sweeter, and that will turn that opposition around very quickly. Mac McDonald, heaps of Premier League experience himself. Recently come back from a stint in the UK where he was working as a teacher. Dylan Alexandra Ridley in midfield, but it's going to fall for Mihalakis. Sends one forwards. Early chance here. Opportunity for Brenda Bell oh. for Norabanda, and they've struck the post. It was Matt Atkins who stole him behind. Desperately unlucky there. Decent strike from Atkins. Bulls have started brightly. Here's Mia Lakis. Atkins is the target. Ruiz, who was perhaps caught out there, and that slice from Afiabo oh. and landed on the roof of his net. Early nurse from the blue blues and a good start from Narabanda. Absolutely. Zach Cosentini is going to be very careful. He turns the ball over in those areas. Uh, when you're in that, your own third there. Well, Atkins struck it perfectly, didn't he? And uh, unfortunately for him, it came back off the inside of the post and not into the nets. That's a real let-off for Brindabella. So if they heed the, heed the warning. Gant with the corner. Five blue shirts to aim for. One towards the far post, and the header is harmless in the end. But bright start for Narabunda, and that'll please their coach, John Zalanato. Be more pleased if he had scored. Oh, absolutely. Even that corner, though, if he heads that ball back across goal, it can definitely lead to a great opportunity. So, here's Zach Lawrence looking to play the one-two with Tool. Has the ball back. Twisting and turning. Good pressure from work on. Still going. Lawrence looking to pick out someone in the penalty area. Alexandra Ridley went in there. It's going to fall for Clug. Yeah, they've positioned themselves where they're well there to be able to retain the ball. And Afiabo again tried that crossfield ball, didn't quite come off for him there. 
it's early days. I think Jeremy Butler would prefer perhaps to keep that in his locker till he's ready to hit it. Get a few touches of the ball first and perhaps build another attack. Well, we expected the first 30 minutes to be frantic. We almost had a goal after 30 seconds. Matt Atkins, former Canberra Olympic player. Former winner of their Player of the Year awards, I understand, and went to Greece for a week. Here's Matsula. And Atkins did very well, and he's in behind again here, causing a lot of problems on that left flank. Using his pace to good effect. Here is Atkins, tries his luck, but that should be easy for McDonald. Already, it looks like Matt Atkins will be a, a real handful for the Brindabella defence. Have to tighten things up on that flank, because... That's two balls in behind and twice he's caused a lot of problems. Blues haven't really settled at the moment. And it's mostly Narabunda doing the attacking, but Prindabella get the chance for a free kick to settle it down. Club captain Chris Ruiz to take. Distinctive hairstyle. Would you say it suits him, Russ? I'm going to say yes, because <laughs> he might listen to this later. <laughs> and he's a big boy. Well, he's a lovely guy, so don't read too much into that haircut. Yeah, Chris Ruiz has uh, been around a few clubs as well, Manero Panthers and Tuggerong United, and fortunately know him quite well, and he's, a, as you say, a really nice guy, which all these guys out there are. They're, like you say, they're stately players. None of them are full-time. There's a lot of club men for both sides, and like I said, that's directly coming from the influence of their coaches, who both pride themselves on their team culture and off-field get together this. Here's Atkins from Harrington's flick. Harrington tried to give him it back but only presented it to Alexandra Ridley and he's asked Tool to get on his bike and John Tool will have to go on his own here. There's not much options in the middle. Tried to pull it back. No one was there but Tim Wurchon got in to concede the corner. Well defended in the end. Both sides turning over cheap possession though at the moment and the first set piece opportunity for the home side. John tool has been entrusted with it. No doubt Alexandra Ridley will be a target. Jamie Taylor's gone in there to make a nuisance of himself in front of the keeper. That's where the ball's headed. It's going to fall for Ruiz. Sets Defense himself up. Chris Ruiz didn't catch it at all. Second opportunity though. Decides to go wide instead and Cossettini looks to deliver and wins a corner on the far side. Sat up for a moment for Ruiz and he fancied his chances but didn't catch it at all. He certainly shaped up for it. He would have been quite the hero had he uh, managed to put something away from there. Well, these are the kind of games and evenings made for heroes and made for worldly strikes. Tool to try his luck on the far side. Certainly the best chances, though, have come from those turnovers and transition moments in the middle third, catching the defences expanded. Ruiz is up and that's nodded away by Skouros and... Helped uh, by Carapanagos, rather, and it helped clear by Harrington, who wins the ball back. And it's dispossessed by Afiabo. Bulls will look to dictate possession as much as they can. Their obvious outlet is Atkins, and here he is again. Clug robs him this time, Harrington. Looks for Gantz, behind here. And the flag goes up against Matt Atkins very quickly. Good football again, though, from Narabunda. He appears to have sort of a free range to come across that line. And it's making it very difficult to pick up for Brindabella. Matt Atkins. If he can sustain those runs, it's only a matter of time. His tool. Skouros is there to tidy up. It's a good run forward by Saravolo. We just tuned in. We played six and a half minutes. Early, uh, early chance for Mackins after 30 seconds for Narabana. Struck the post. Early warning. Been an, been an exciting start, though. It's been good. It's exactly what we're looking for. Brindabella Blues Football Club formed in 1990 as the Blue Light Soccer Club, who were associated with the Police Citizens Youth Club in Arendelle. They became the Brindabella Blues in 2002. And I understand you had a little spell with blue light back in the day, Mitch. It was highly unusual. It's a long story, but uh, my very first year in Canberra football as a player was as a 14-year-old playing for the blue light under-17 side. Here's Atkins. 
looking to make life difficult for current for the current Blues players. Cosatini. The ref unfortunately has got in the way there, but that's actually worked out quite well. But JB Taylor will get on his bike. Should be comfortable for Shane Hyduk. Mialakis wanted the free kick, not given. Yeah, I think he the linesman initially signalled free kick. Referee's overruled him, I think he was overruled. Ping for handball there, no VAR required. Gantz behind the dead ball. No desire to play short here by the looks of it, so they're going to go a little bit longer. Afiabo with the header. Alexandra Ridley. And that's fortunate and Ruiz goes back to McDonald. That was Cerevolo's clearance. The Bulls, for their part, were formed in 1976. They played in the top flight from then until 1987 and reached the 1981 Grand Final, where they were beaten 1-0 by Lusso. And were runners-up a couple of times in that period as well. So they have more of the pedigree, you think, at the top level. Obviously, these two sides now are both MPL2, and we'll be looking for promotion to the top flight of Canberra football next season, when promotion and relegation comes in. Bring a whole new dimension to football in Canberra that will win a match. It most certainly will and we've already seen the effects with clubs all across the MPL1 suddenly now saying they cannot rest on their laurels and recruitment has gone into overdrive. It's going to be even worse next season. Plenty of names in that MPL2 that have tasted top flight football. Queenie City for example, White Eagles, O'Connor Knights, ANU. Yeah, very proud football clubs and it'll be exciting to know that they are capable of have that entry to get back to the top flight. For those of you unfamiliar with Canberra football, and new football club is where Tommy Rogic played a fair bit of MPL football before he made the move to Belconnen and headed overseas. That's a challenge and that is a free kick on the edge of the box. Harrington danced his way through for a moment. It was really close to the uh, to the line there and referees awarded the free kick and a chance for Narabunda to load the penalty area. Yeah, Jeremy will be happy with that foul I believe because he was in a dangerous position had he not been brought down. Harrington over this one. Only two in the wall. McDonald needs to be wary. Flat one from Harrington and cleared at the near post. By Saravolo is a decent clearance too. In fact, I tell you, it was Josh Gunter. Apologies to Josh. Game hasn't quite settled, Russ. We're waiting for these lights to come on, Mitch. <laughs> Afiabo sends that away, looking for Tool. He's quite lonely, though. Four against one. It was easy for Skuros to tidy up. It's Brenda Bella's turn to win a free kick. Both of these sides do have previous in the FA Cup, of course, in the qualifying rounds. Now, but the Bulls, for example, haven't scored an FFA Cup qualifying goal since 2015. <laughs> there you go. In their 5-2 win over Connor Knights. That was five games ago, including this one, so they're overdue. Yeah, they'd love to see the ball ripple in it, wouldn't they? Well, they almost did after 30 seconds of the match, of course. And since then, as Mitch said, it's not really settled. Club will challenge, wins the header. It's a great header. Falls for Cosatini. That's Taylor in support. Mialakis comes back and <laughs> fairly agricultural challenge, and he acknowledges the fact. Again, Cosatini's got to move that ball a little bit quicker. A set piece opportunity for Ben Safiabo. He's been off the mark with a couple of crossfield balls from open play. Swings that towards the far post. There's Dylan. He's going to drop for Tool with a strike, and that one's landed in the adjacent car park. Saw his name up in lights, Tool. But he's capable from that range. He certainly is. I can't recall him scoring a hat trick in an FFA Cup game for Monero only a couple of years ago. Last season. Both these sides went out in this stage. Brindabella Blues were beaten 2-0 by Gungal in Juventus. 
one of your former clubs, Mitch. Absolutely, with my and first Premier League club. Now about the Bulls were beaten 5-0 by Queen Bean City. I think there's guys playing in the Garden Gallery, Juventus side, that uh, were playing Premier League for the same club many years ago. Ball forward for Harrington, gets the touch on, and Atkins might be in behind, but the flag will go up. Slight touch from Harrington, just playing Atkins offside. But that's a real outlet for the Bulls, isn't it? The pace of, of uh, Atkins, and that's going to be something that Brenda Bell are, are going to need to watch throughout this 90 minutes. He appears to have a sort of a defensive responsibility to the left-hand side, but when they have that ball, he's coming across, well, basically wherever he likes to go, where he sees space. Yeah, and someone with that ability to have that slightly free roll makes sense. And you look at the way the shape's changing. It's almost a, a 4-4-2 now, Narrabunda. 15 minutes in nearly. Harrington, just a little nudge in the back of Cerevolo. That's his second foul from Nick Mialakas. He's got to be careful because... A little bit over-enthusiastic, that one. Well, that's two now, so there, there has to be some questions of whether he's, he's due a yellow card. And Clug felt that one, didn't he? He's still down, and, and there is a yellow, yellow card. card. Don't think he can argue with that one. Might be on a tightrope for the remaining 75 minutes, Nick Mialakis. He is a full-on all-action player, isn't he? He does like to get involved and... All or nothing. If you miss time one, you're going to be in trouble. That certainly is concerning for Narrabunda that we're not 15 minutes in. And he's on a yellow card. What can Afiabo do with the resultant free kick? Go short to Alexandra Ridley. And then tries to send it down the middle for the runner on the far post. And once again, though, it was overhit. Lawrence couldn't get on the ends of that one. Three or four of those he's tried now. Here is Afiaba once more. I think he'd be the first to admit that he hasn't quite won. Here come the challenges that we expected. There's a few going in here, and Alexandra Ridley has gone in on Gantz after Klug went in on Harrington, and this is more of what we it expected. Was <laughs> it was tit for tat. Uh, and anyone who's watched, played with, coached some of these guys, you know uh, how qu quickly it escalates. Well, the first 15 minutes felt like a pre-season friendly, hasn't it? But that's suddenly kicked into gear and Fired it's almost like they've <laughs> realised what we're here for. Yeah, It's the FFA Cup and we're looking for a qualifier. And they're thinking if we can just get a goal before the lights come on. If the lights come on. Then they might get the, the result by default. <laughs> Mialakis is up there. It's going to fall for Atkins who chips it towards the far post. Real chance here. Ball fell for Gantz. I think he thought about shooting first, first time, time, didn't he? Yeah, crossed his mind and then got stuck between the two and nothing happened. He has earned his team a corner, though. And you'd have to say that the Bulls have looked more likely when they're going forwards. Yeah, definitely. The delivery in behind and that service in general. It's another great corner. Swings it in. McDonald couldn't get it, and it's cleared off the line. By Gunter on the far post, the strikes come in, and McDonald's there again. It's an easy tap in. Akin scores. Narrabunda Bulls lead. In the end... It was as easy as you like for Matt Atkins from three yards. A great save from McDonald's, but no one reacted except the striker. And it's the Bulls in front. Uh, Brenda Bella are disappointed. They've looked very disorganised defending corners. Uh, free headers at the back post. That, that one just then even coming in and cleared off the line. They had three chances to get rid of it, didn't they? And they didn't. McDonald made a great save from the shot that fizzed in, I think, from... from uh, Karapanagos who struck it from the edge of the box and it fell beautifully for Matt Atkins and denied by the post earlier on he wasn't going to miss from there well, I th you know the run of play I think they deserve that Brendy Bell have it all to do feel a bit for Josh Gunter who cleared that one off the line as well what a great delivery though from Jesse Gant to swing that one in yeah they've all been on the money they've been outstanding set piece delivery so far and again it could do you think McDonald would be a di bit disappointed he didn't get anything on that original cross? I, I think so. Um, having said that, you know, someone who's capable of delivering a ball at that pace, with that swing, it naturally causes all sorts of problems, even for an experienced goalkeeper. What have the Blues got in response to that? Tool is beaten, the tackle's flying in now. Here's John O'Toole going in to Mialakis, and the free kick will go Narabunda's way. We only have to refer to... Allison, Liverpool versus Burnley recently, that you know, an excellent set piece delivery. Can put the very best goalkeepers under all sorts. 
Skouros with the free kick. Narabunda with the advantage. Brenda Miller need to regroup here. Skouros sends it long. Mialakis is the target. Efiabo wins it. Problems for McDonald again, and this time he clutches it. And he'll be much more relieved. Good win by Russell. Just thumped forward by Wurchon. I haven't seen any adjustments from Brunabilla as yet. And again, here's the problems on that. That man again. Yeah, Atkins causing all sorts of issues. He's won another free kick. Class player on the field at the moment, isn't he? Oh, he's the standout performer. Jeremy Absolutely. Butler, as I mentioned, is suspended. He stood by the rights of this team's dugout on behind the fence where he should be in passing a couple of instructions to his assistant, Jason Knox. He needs to get something out there because it's either how do you stop Atkins or can you stop the service to Atkins? Can he deal with this free kick? Karapanagos will take. I'm surprised it's not Gant taking it. It's a decent knock as well. Oh. It was one and here's Atkins looking to wind one up. It's a good one in the air on the far post by Matsula. Here come those lights, Russ. All of a sudden they've no warming up, have they? No, they've Just turned on, ready to go. Straight on, ready to go. That's what you'd expect for 400 gram, wouldn't you? <laughs> you don't say. Here's Harrington. Another great flick on. That's great combination play from the throw. Off goes Atkins again into the penalty area, and he's got a runner in the middle. It was Mia Lakis. Couldn't quite pick him out, but another danger sign for Brinda Bella. Mia Lakis is going to keep this in. One on one with Afiabo. Tried to swing it to the near post for he's Matsula. He's worked so hard to keep that ball in. And then he's tried to use the outside of his right to deliver a ball in it. We feel like we have a cup tie now, don't we? Yeah. Taylor tries to play that infield. There's Gantz. Gets it back from Matsula. And then gives it away. But we'll win it back straight away. And just note how quickly they look for Atkins straight away. And it's a good challenge from Alexandra Ridley on Karapanagos. Thumping tackle. Had to time that one correctly. And his work has to be done over on that right side to help that defence out. And the tackle's flying in again. Carapanagos getting his own back. Lawrence. Great football. Tool. Lawrence once more. And he's side down from behind. And well, he's given a free kick against Brintabella here. It must be for handball. Is that what he's. Well, it looked like a foul, didn't it? <laughs> it looks like a Blues free kick every day of the week. It absolutely did. But it's Narabundu who've got the decision. He didn't hesitate, though. He... Needless to say, Zach Lawrence didn't agree. Ruiz wins a header. Here is Lawrence again. Just to bundle his way past his marker. Still going. Gantz missed this, and Taylor tried to get a foot on it. It'll come for Cossettini. Second chance for the midfielder. And Gant wins it back. Jesse Gant's been all action, hasn't he, since the start of this one? He has been. His positioning's been good so far. And certainly, as we've highlighted, his set-piece delivery's been on point. Free kick, uh, throw into the Bulls. which they will take on this near side, just in front of their bench. Afiabo will win the header, though, and Tool will try to turn his marker. His Skouros needs to clear this. Only as far as Taylor thundered into the challenge. They've certainly raised the intensity, Brindabella. They had to do, they had to make a change. It's scrappy, but there's some real challenges flying in, isn't there? Here's Alexandra Ridley. They have their shoelaces caught together or something. <laughs> Gunther. Looks to flick it into midfield. Tools layoff. Decent. Might come for Taylor. His tool. Tries to bring it down, but there's two white shirts around him. Just can't get the ball under. His tool again. Afiabo. Don't think we've seen the last yellow card tonight, Russ. As the game goes on, you get the feeling there may be a few more. His Ruiz looking to calm his team down. Halfway through the first half. 
Mialakis could challenge that from Tool. Well, it seemed to be. Oh. The referee disagrees with me. John Tool seems to think he got all the ball. It looked okay from where we were. It's all helter skelter, though, isn't it, at the moment? Yeah. So it's difficult for the referee. He only can give what he sees. What we're seeing is the Narrabunda Bulls leading in this FFA Cup qualifier. Can they move this quickly to the left? Wilchons look that way for Russell. Just to take on Cossettini. who's stuck with him all the way. Happy to concede the throw in in front of the largely subdued Brindabella support so far. No, they haven't had a lot to, to shout about as yet, but it's early. Here's Harrington, turned his marker. Gantz got near post, Mirlach is far, and McDonald's happy to clutch that to his chest and wants to get on with it. Rather slice the clearance, though, and it might come off for them. Here's Alexandra Ridley once more in the middle of the park. Lawrence looks to chip over the top, and it was almost oh, a great ball, and Wurzel needs to be on his toes. Jamie Taylor has a little nip of the heels. A, it's a really silly little foul. Dylan Alexandro Ridley in midfield. His brother, Evan Alexandro Ridley, pro footballer. Has just arrived. He's down here in front of us, yeah. Pro footballer in Lithuania, a goalkeeper. Come to watch his brother do battle in the FFA Cup. That'd be something to hold over your brother, isn't it? You might be a pro, but you've never played in the FFA Cup, mate. Yeah. You've been. You've played against Celtic? Well, yeah. I... <laughs> in the Europa League? I've played against Narrabunda. Everyone finds their level, Mitch. Absolutely. Found ours up here. It's <laughs> <laughs> the reason we're not on the pitch. Absolutely. When you watch games like this where it's all held to scale and the tackles are thundering in, I'm glad I'm up here. This might fall for Harrington. Tries to ride the challenge of Afiab. It does well there, Duncan Harrington. Gantz. Namia Lakis. Flag goes up. It's a great little ball. And Harrington's doing a wonderful job back to goal up there allowing and bringing those other players into the game not a noted goal scorer Duncan Harrison but he has though as you say holds the ball up well brings others into play and allows Atkins and Mia Lakis to flourish Mia Lakis and Atkins can get on past him and we've still got plenty of threat in behind so it's actually working that combination is really really effective at the moment McDonald's will take the free kick Alexandra Ridley good header Taylor now Alexandra Ridley here is Harrington doing just that. Once again, oh. Let's run away from Mihalakis. He looks disgusted with himself. Everything's being done at a pace here. And this is a mistake at the back. And his tool into the area. Tries to bundle his way past the challenge of Matsula, who was covering well. At the expense of a corner. And two will be on it again, and here come the heavy artillery from the back. Clug and Ruiz. Alexander Ridley's in there too. It's going to be close to a foul on the goalkeeper if he's not careful in there, though. And tools over hit that one. Cossettini will pick up the pieces, looks to reload. Shadowed all the way by Nasaskuros. Blues were stately champions of Division 3 in 2015 and got promoted straight to Division 1. <laughs> Some rewards. Interesting. Long throw from Taylor. Ruiz wins the header, but there's no one gambling. Oh. And they would have had a chance because Theo Haridis, a little bit nervy, hasn't had much to do, the young goalkeeper. And that goal mouth, as we mentioned, it's actually rougher than it looks. And he's not particularly tall, is he? Mihalais, th Theo Haridis. He's only a little... Lawrence, he's come into the game more over the last five minutes or so. Ball into the area. Here's Tool. It might run for Taylor. Alexandra Ridley, and then he's overhit that one badly. Chipped it with the nine arm when the pitching wedge would have done. I was just about to say, he's sort of been a little bit everywhere. He's been one of the reasons that Bridabella is sort of clawing their way back into the game. Both these sides don't start there respective seasons until early April in fact the Bulls don't have a match in the league until the 13th of April the second round fixture when they play the O'Connor Knights at Kayleen 
Brindabella kick off their campaign at Woden Park a week earlier against Western Malonglo. Bulls with the throw. Harrington looks for Hyduck's throwing. Does well once more to step away from his marker. Lining one up here, Duncan Harrington. It took a deflection as well of Alexandra Ridley, but rather than wrong foot McDonald, it took all the pace off him. Made it even easier. Gunter to Lawrence. Gunter again. Lawrence. Taylor wants it this side. That's a fantastic ball. Gunter wants it on the near side, and he's away here for a moment. Only two to aim for in the penalty area. Taylor's on the far post. And that should have been easy for Hyduck, but he's misjudged that one and conceded what might have been a needless corner. Maybe he didn't get a call that he had time. We're starting to see teams obviously have that little bit of extra time on the ball to build some of these attacks. So now it's critical that organisation of, as a team, are you pressing high? Are we dropping off? Are we trying to avoid that ball over the top? What exactly are we doing? You don't want to get caught in the middle. Tool with the corner. Once again, can he get this one right? You ever hit the last one? That one's deep two towards the far post. The header comes in. Oh. It's tipped over the crossbar, I think. Hit the crossbar, in fact. Clugged from the back. Or was it Lawrence on the far post? I think it may have been Lawrence who came in and won the header. And it's cannoned off the top of the crossbar. And that's the closest the Blues have come. It is. Uh, it's, it's interesting. I'm, I'm watching Jamie Taylor. And he's putting a lot of pressure on the goalkeeper. And it's going to be desperately close, I would imagine, to, uh, to committing a foul. And the last thing you want is that ball to hit the net and then someone to have stepped in front of the goalkeeper and given away a foul. Well, judging by the fact that Lawrence was holding his head, it must have been him that had in his hands. He thought he'd equalise for a moment. First one the tools got on the money. May not be the last. Here's Karapanagos. Thumped forward and Atkins is in over the top, but the flag has gone up. Very marginal call oh, that one, but wow. So to the naked eye it was pretty close. But they're running huge risk Ooh. by playing such a high line Fire. against the pace of Atkins. Firing another warning about why you've got to be so careful. Meanwhile, Clug almost found Lawrence. At the other end. It's probably his best longer kick so far in terms of distance, but again, what are we aiming for? Good touch from Ruiz to find Gunter. Alexander Ridley wants a foul, thought he was nudged in the back by Matsula. Harrington goes charging in as well, and Brenda Bella win the possession. Saravolo's touch. Couldn't have misjudged that one, and it's a, another throw on the far side. Yeah, Brindabell have definitely worked their way back into this fixture, but that, that threat of Atkins looms large. It's given a free kick, must have been handball oh. by Gunter. Interesting one anyway, that's swept towards in. Mialakis is unmarked, he's got a header on it! And Nick Mialakis doubles Bulls money! Just like that, from a long free kick, got up in front of McDonald's, won the header, and it's 2-0 Narabanda. It's that organisation on set pieces again. Are they marking correctly? Who's where? That seems all too easy. Take nothing away, it was fantastic delivery into a great area, but they've looked vulnerable on set pieces all night. Nick Mialakis, Rose Highest, wins the header and the Bulls are 2-0 up and they have one foot in round four and a potential match against Canberra FC and we've only played half an hour. Much to do for Brinda Bella. Taylor. Saravolo gives it away. Here's Carapanagos. So how many years was it with no goals and now they've got two and a half an hour? Since 2015. Well, they have got it given away here is a free kick and there might be another card here is Nasa Skouros becomes the second Narabanda player to be booked two goals two yellow cards not ideal but I'm sure Jono Zalanado would have taken that ratio I think you you take that that if that was offered now this is within shooting distance you'd think yep real chance to maybe get this one in as we mentioned 
Thea Harid is not the tallest goalkeeper. Chris Ruiz is popping forward to have a chat. Dylan Alexandro Ridley. If you can drop this ball into that goal mouth and then follow up whatever could potentially occur after that. Has he got the accuracy? Has he got the power? Dylan Alexandro Ridley drives it low, is deflected. It might come for Tool on the edge of the box. Try to dig it out. And to be fair to him, he struck that ball very well. The wall did his job. Gunter keeps it in. There's a number of people calling for that ball to be delivered in the well, box. Here's real trouble. Here's Atkins. Half the length of the field to run into. He's well on his own. There's five blue shirts coming back to try and stop him. He's gone the wrong way. In the end, it was Clark who got who did well. Uh, Afiaba who did well, stood up. He's come back into the covering defence. He didn't have that little look. And he walked back into trouble. He was very lonely, wasn't he? Yep. There was no one going up in support. You'd love him as an experienced player to say, you know, am I going to the corner? Am I going to goal? What am I doing? But he certainly didn't have that look. Blues have another free kick. Don't they go to Lawrence, who's been pretty productive down that right-hand side. He tries to run Adrian Russell. and It's a great tackle, well defended. The fullback does well. The lights continue to shine on Everlast Oval. They're shining on Narrabunda at the moment, 2-0 up. I wonder if Zach Lawrence can hold that ball and allow the fullback to get around him. A little bit of variety. Taylor is going to launch this one towards Tool and Cossettini. Cossettini's going to win it, but there's no one near him. For the flick on. Falls for Alexander Ridley, who struck it well. The balls defend resolutely. Afiabo, he's rather skied that one, but it's turned into a decent ball in the end. And pinball in the ball's penalty area. Afiabo doesn't get hold of it. And Narabunda gleefully clear. Clug sent it straight back from whence it came, and the keeper comes, and Theoridis clutches the flag. Would have gone up, I think, against Taylor anyway. But real pinball in that Narabunda penalty area, but. Ball's dropping for Brindabella, but they're not striking it cleanly, Mitch. No, absolutely. Again, he's causing them problems. Here he goes, Atkins. Oh. Tried the little back heel to Carapanagos, but Salavola read that like a bulk, and off he goes to try and find Tool. Foot race is on. John O'Toole was there, but it was won by Zane Wurchon. This next five minutes, Narabunda really need to get it together, hold shape, and not not concede a goal well 10 minutes before half time Mitch and uh, if they do score here they're right back in the cup tie exactly they've had, they've had a great 35 minutes just a couple a couple of guys taking deep breaths and you can see here there's, there's one player across halfway for the second goal again though is McDonald disappointed he's not come and won that ball been a bit more physical with his challenge certainly yeah, this angle we're on makes it very very hard to tell but again the marking has to be questioned there was no one near him was no, he Mia seems, just stolen in it seemed very 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 easy stolen a march on the defense and did well to get there it was much to do when he got there and once he won the header though it was inevitable that it was going to drop in the goal his tool been a willing outlet for Brindabella they've asked a lot of him off he goes again though, touch. John O'Toole. Real chance this for the Blues if he can find a teammate, but his cutback is easily dealt with by Jesse Gantz. And that's been their problem in a nutshell there, the Blues. They've got him behind no numerous occasions, but that final pass just hasn't come off yet. Oh, not even close. It, di it didn't seem like the right decision to make after such a great first touch and that movement in behind. Lawrence went close off this last corner from the near sides. Can Toole pick out a blue shirt again swings one in it's, it's a chance for Ruiz great header clear that by Wurchon at the back and Harrington does the captain's shift to get rid of it they look dangerous on set pieces though in the main the Bulls have defended them pretty well Zafiaba you'd like to see him further forward I think when he gets the ball he can cause problems and for such a talented play, he'd be pretty disappointed with his first half so far. Here he is again. It's better. Finds Cosentini. Alexandra Ridley. Great tool. Football. Now Ruiz pinging the ball around the Blues. Good ball over the top. And here's a chance for Saravolo. But again, defending well was Wurchon. It's excellent defending. Great composure. Still not away. Saravolo. Oh. Tool. And that, his touch lets him down for once. And... 
it may prove costly is Harrington and Atkins is on his bike and he's got goal sides for a moment Matty Atkins are racing away can he finish it off here Matt Atkins yes. he can superbly done from Matt Atkins one end of the field to the other and the Bulls have a three goal advantage and the player of the first half has two of them and it's a long way back here for Brinda Bella they'll be tremendously disappointed I mean, we've been saying as early as the, you know, the fifth, fifth minute second minute that Atkins is a real threat in behind and it just hasn't been organised back there. The inquest between the Brindabella Blues defence, the line is way too high and Atkins is making them pay. Well, not just too high, but it's one-on-one. -on -one. It's, it's just too early to be throwing caution to the wind in a cup tie. I know they're two goals down, well, were two goals down, but now you're talking about a, a real mountain. Taking nothing away from Matt Atkins who found the finish once again when he needed to. Like I said, Narapan have absolutely reverted to a 4-4-2 and they don't need anything else. Pack that midfield. Leave Atkins to do the damage there. Ruiz. And Harrington as your number nine. Well, here's Clug. Stumbles slightly and that allows the Blue Bulls to regain possession. Here's Tool. A bit deeper, Cossettini. They're giving it away again. Here's Russell, and he'll go long as well. He'll look for Gantz, but Clug's there. Mialakis beaten to it by Cossettini. Now Taylor. Can we get the delivery right? Just swinging in towards the far post. It's a good ball, but there's no one in a blue shirt in there. And Gantz can bring it away. And look at the space here for Carapanagos. And Harrington wants it. And he's going to get it, but he's offside. Went a little bit too early, and maybe Carapanagos delayed the pass. Just a a little bit too much but a lot of work for Brenda Bella Blues and Jeremy Butler to do definitely and you know there's that fine line now between chasing the game and committing numbers forward to get goals and <laughs> leaving these spaces that Narrabunda are exploiting so well but there's one thing you it's difficult to defend against at state league level Mitch it's pace yep and Matt Atkins has bags of it so does Zach Lawrence and John O'Toole and here is Toole looking to Bring the way back into it. Lawrence tries the spectacular. And Mia Lakis sends it towards the Everlast Marquis. Anywhere will do for them. Six minutes to half time. Probably not in their wildest dreams. Do they believe that they'll be 3 0 up away from home at this stage of the competition? No, they would have, would have taken that comfortably prior to kick off. Here's Afiabo. Can the Blues give themselves a glimmer of hope? Not with distribution like that, unfortunately. And Russell just sends it away. But again, just, just note the setup. With Atkins sort of. Now there is a second defender back there, but.
And we're back, I think. I think we're back. So we had a bit of a moment there. I think the uh, generator exploded or something. <laughs> we lost <laughs> you for a moment there, Mitch. And, uh, but we're back watching the action. It's still 3-0. You didn't miss anything. Brenda Bella looking for a way back into the contest. Here's Karapanagos. Is it? Karapanagos has it back there. And here's Gantz, who's been very good in this first half. Look, tries his luck from range, and why not? And he's an opportunity to go the other way. Yes, two. Sees the keeper of his line. He's gone for something rather spectacular. Didn't quite have the radar on. Mm. Possibly it's worth a go. It's a long way uh, to go on his own, wasn't it? Possibly. I mean, it, it's just got to be perfect, though. And the support was coming. And there needs to be a lot of, a lot more better decisions from Brindabell if they're going to get back in this fixture. Moments they trail 3 0. As we come up to the ends of the first half, it's Harrington. Ball forward looking for the run. Flag has gone up for offside, and he's going to let that go, I think. He's given a free kick to Brenda Bella instead, Zach Lawrence, and that's going to be time to play on now. We're not going to have too much stoppage time, I don't think, at the end of the first half. Here's Alexandra Ridley. Gets it back again, but the pass was a bit short, and he goes thumping into the challenge. Left a little piece on Karapanagos again here, and here's a chance for Lawrence into the penalty area, and he's overrun that. Probably sums up their half, I think, Ross. It's not been the best for the Blues, has it? They've still found themselves in promising positions, predominantly on the right-hand side, and once again failed to, to make anything of it. Dear Haridis with the goal kick. There can only be seconds left until half-time. He's left that one a bit short, though, and Toole might send this back with interest. And John O'Toole gives the Brindabella Blues an unlikely lifeline, a mistake from the Bulls goalkeeper, and Toole just strikes it straight back in the net, as calm as you like. The Blues back in it, perhaps. Oh, incredible. We're in the stoppage time, and that is completely an unforced error. Oh, Narrabunda will be gutted with that. They still have a two-goal advantage, but maybe that will give them momentum to the Blues. It just changes the half-time talk completely. Well, Tool needed to find a finish, and he did, didn't he? He took it really well, just strokes it into the empty net. I'm going to have something go the other way. And that's the half-time whistle, and how important might that goal be on the stroke of half-time? As it is, goals from Matt Atkins twice, either side of a header from Nick Mialakis, gives the Narrabunda Bulls a 3-1 lead, but that goal, right on half-time, Mitch, may change the whole complexion. Well, it has to. Team talks in that moment change for both sides. I mean, there's, a, there's an element here where, you know, you're 3-0 down in a cup time pre-season that you're asking... You know, guys, be careful. Don't get sent off. It's going to, it's going to influence our league campaign um, for potentially a fixture that you know is over and out. Now it's saying, well, hey, we only need something to go our way, another goal, and the game's changed again. Well, still plenty of work to do for the Brindabella Blues, but that goal from John O'Toole right on the cusp of half-time has given them some hope. Uh, half-time here at Everlast uh, closed in the FFA Cup qualifying round. It's Brindabella Blues 1, Narrabunda Bulls 3.
Welcome back to Everlast Enclosed in the FFA Cup qualifying round. Brinda Bella Blues, they're out on the field, raring to go. No sign of narrow bundle balls. They've not packed up and gone home. Do you think Mitch at 3 1 up? I don't think so. Uh, I just think Brinda Bella with that late goal are probably keen to get on it, get on with it, with the momentum and, and see if they can make something of this game. Well, they need to do something. And they need to do something quickly, you would think. They've looked sharp in most, page, in most stages of the game, so there's a chance for them. They scored right on half-time when John O'Toole scored a struck win, the keeper um, error from Mihailis Theoharidis. Earlier than that, Matt Atkins had struck the post as early as 30 seconds and then tucked one away to give uh, the Bulls the lead. He struck again after Nick Mialakis had headed home the second for Narabanta, who we still await. We think we're going to see Curtis Schaefer join the fray in a moment. I think Jamie Taylor has come off. It does appear to be Jamie Taylor. So it looks like Schaefer for Taylor is the first change that Jeremy Butler has made. Interesting to see what he adds. Is he is he a right footer or is he going to be on the left-hand side? How do they get something? A little bit more penetration on that left flank. Well, they looked good going down the right, didn't they, with Lawrence? And Tool was fairly handy through the middle. Well, it's a cliche, but the next goal is massive, isn't it? Mitch, if, it, if Brindabella get it, we've got a massive cup tie on our hands. Absolutely critical. And you watch the, the volume ramp up if, if they can get one. It will be on. Here come the match officials. Shane Lyson-Smith, the referee. Jai Lyris and Liam O'Rourke. It's a bit difficult for Shane Lyson Smith for a period in that first half, wasn't it? He got a bit feisty. He definitely got feisty, and there was plenty of tackles, and there was times where it was hard to tell exactly what was happening. But he dished out a couple of cards. He gave one to Nick Mialakis and Nasser Skouros. Again, if you're narrow bundle, it's, it, I'm a firm believer in all the little things count. You know, they've they've used every second of half time, slow things down, get their heads right. What do they want to implement in this second half? And with the Blues will line up as follows. Mitch McDonald in goal, Gunter Ruiz, Klug and Afiabo, Cerevolo, Alexander Ridley and Costantini in midfield. Up front, Lawrence, Toole and Schaefer, who will join us. Brinda Bella, as you were, I think, in the first half. The Haridis in goal. Russell, Skuros, Wurchon and Hajduk in the back. Matsula, Kerapanagos and Gant in midfield. Atkins, Harrington and Mialakis up front. Mali Atkins spinning the ball on his finger and he has added on a string this evening, okay. hasn't he? He's been the star performer. Probably thinking he's taking that one home tonight if he can get another. Well, the FFA Cup often springs heroes. Manny Atkins will be iron up a hat trick. We did catch up with Evan Alexandra Ridley for a chat at halftime. He tells us he did play in the FFA Cup <laughs> against Narrabundra. He played. He said he did, didn't he? And he so said he thinks he went to penalties. His brother officially has nothing <laughs> it's a bit <laughs> to <harsh>. talk about <laughs> when it comes to the football underway then and it is an important first 15 minutes or so you would think for the Blues if they're to find a way back into it and keep their FFA Cup hopes alive remember the winner of this has the unenviable task of taking on the all-conquering Canberra FC in the next round but that's what it's all about yeah. for these guys at this level. Trying to play the yeah, big sides. Yeah. And, 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 you know, it's, it's, it, it is nice to, to sort of throw back and play against last year's best team. It's an exciting challenge. Blues played a couple of pre-season friendlies already. They drew with the Monero Panthers 2-2. Lost 3-2 to the White Eagles and only went down 2-0 to Premier League Word and Western as well. So they've got a bit of form in pre-season. The Bulls, meanwhile, lost 3-0 to the O'Connor Knights yeah. in their only pre-season hit around outside of the Cup Day that they took part in with Tigers, Panthers and Rhinos and Jerin Gong as well here they are on the front foot the Blues and a first chance an opportunity to swing this one in it's Lawrence but much better already though much better already looking to find a pass find the target to build the attack Atkins wins a header Clug picks it up Schaefer is it looks to have a little bit of pace he seems to be playing more centrally with Tool. may as well go for it haven't they a little bit later Ruiz Saravolo 
Now Gunter. Alexander Ridley. Try to swing that down the line and Skuros will be in no rush to get this, but it's going to stay in. Be forced to play it. Now here's Russell. Gantz. Easy yards made there. Here's Atkins. Now Harrington. Once again, that's a very high line. And that was a bit short. That was a proverbial hospital ball from Harrington to Gant there. Brittany Bella appeared to be stick, sticking with this high line. Lawrence. Now Alexandra Ridley. Clug. Didn't have the elevation it needed. So get a second chance there. Nice chest by Alexandra Ridley into his path. And again giving it away and Matsula finds Mialakis very much the pattern of the first half a bit frantic in the early stages Fiabo to Ruiz looks for Lawrence and he's going to get goal side here of Russell for a moment it's been a good battle this one Zach Lawrence looking to take on Adrian Russell and does well gets it into the area but Skuros is there and that's the first time he's misplaced one this evening he's and he made sure he did it well. <laughs> Shanked it into the touch. Tool finds Lawrence. Alexandra Ridley swings it towards Cosentini on the far post. It's a great delivery. Better signs for the Blues, but they've always got to be wary of this on the break. Atkins. Just got to get that ball in behind. Harrington. Gant Atkins. Look at him. He's like a sprinter looking to get going. Afiabo sliced it. Ruiz needs to win it and does. But watching Matt Atkins, he's like a sprinter that's yeah. waiting for the starter's gun, isn't he? He's just trying to get in behind the back there and he's, he's going to get plenty of opportunities, although he's picked himself up rather gingerly here. Looks Maybe he twisted sore. something. It doesn't look very good off the ball. Out of your shot is Cerevolo at the other end. He hasn't signaled to the bench yet. He doesn't look very happy, does he? Matty Atkins. The bench is... No, it certainly appears to be a substitute. This is There's something wrong here with Atkins. He's not happy, and he's going to take himself off. I wow. think. Big change, big moments that in the match. That is significant. Brett McCauley, the replacement for the two-goal strike, going to be keep an eye on that one and see what happened there. I think he maybe rolled something, maybe an ankle, or maybe he's pulled something. We've not played five minutes of this second half. Brinda Bello will be rubbing their hands with that. It's a major attacking weapon. McCauley a lot more stocky in build than Atkins. Going to present a different challenge to Ruiz, I'd imagine. Interesting to see what that was for, uh, for Atkins. He was chasing that through ball, and when Ruiz went out with a header with him, maybe he just landed a little bit awkwardly on the surface. It is a bit rough around that goal, Mal. Is it, is it muscular? Or is it an impact? I'm not sure what, what occurred exactly. By the way, the main attacking weapon for Narabona is sitting on the bench. So that just adds to that scenario of if Brindabella <laughs> can get themselves a goal. If the Blues needed any further encouragement, they've got it. Yep. Can they make it pay? Clug. Afiabo. Clug again. Goes short to Gunter. Now Ruiz. Gunter again. Better possession from the Blues, but not making any ground at the moment. Cosentini. Narabunda certainly reverted to dropping off once they got that three-goal lead and then looking to play mainly on the counter. And well, here's, worked, but here's Afiabo bursting into the penalty. A chance here if he could deliver. Tool was waiting. That's the first time we've seen Ben Afiabo really put his foot down. And here's Harrington, big chance on the break perhaps. McCauley's made the run forward and he perhaps he should have given it. Carabanagos rides one challenge but can't beat Alexandra Ridley. Can he slide someone through? Might fall for Schaefer. Shot comes in and oh. it bobbled up on Theo Heredis. And there's an injury in the middle More of the park to yeah, John Carabanagos. Came out on the wrong end of that challenge with Dylan Alexandra Ridley. It was a firm but fair challenge. He, he, he hits and you stay hit. Yeah, he's a solidly built midfielder, isn't he, Dylan Alexandro Ridley? Right. Solid player, and like I said, he's actually got quite a decent passing range. He's become more and more influential for Brindabello as this game's gone along. 
We wouldn't say Jono Zalonado is worrying just yet, but he must have a few nervous twitters in the stomach, having lost Atkins to injury and that goal right on half-time. Ah, that's the one he's replaying in his head over and over. We'd much oh rather right, be 3-0 up right now. Alexandra Ridley finds two. It gave that hope to Brinda Bella that maybe they wouldn't have had it 3-0 down. Here's McCauley. Harrington. Carapanagos, he's recovered. He's not only recovered, he's put a beautiful ball over the top to Mialakis. And Afiabo's back in there with a challenge. And he had to time it well, and he did. Perfect challenge from Benson Afiabo, otherwise we may have been looking at a spot kick. It was a good challenge, and it needed to be. But you can feel already that, that, that threat that Atkins provided with him going off. It's not a like-for-like -like swap that they had. I don't think McCauley's short of pace, but he's not got this, the, the sprinter's build of Matt Atkins, and maybe that, that line can be a bit higher now for the Blues. That's right. Here's Harrington, who has been very good today. Wins his team a corner. Another question would be whether Mialakis comes into a more central role to provide that, that depth to their attack, but certainly question marks for both coaches. Gantz with the set piece. Swing towards the far post. McCauley's there with the header and he won it well and cleanly. Good chance that. I think he would have looked back. He'll say he probably should have done a little bit better. Great delivery from Gantz again though. He caused the problems with the first for the first goal with his delivery which was cleared off the line. After a bit of pinball it fell nicely for Atkins. Might be able to hear. Lina Fiorese barking instructions, technical director. Ruiz looks to send that forward. It's one at the back, though, quite comfortably by Zane Workon. Workon, rather, I should say. Here's Schaefer, miscontrols it. Nice composure from Gant, keep it ticking over. Workon again, all he's been caught in possession, but runs the gauntlet and comes out on top. Maybe a little bit fortunate, his tool. Schaefer. That's got the fans going. Cosatini swings it to this near side, but Lawrence is beaten by Adrian Russell. Chris Ruiz. Josh Gunter back to Ruiz once more. Can feel the momentum building for the Blues though. Nice touch from Tool. And Lawrence is, well, well, the soft one there, it would seem. Shane Hyduk. With the tackle. Oh, I was going to say play continued on. They wanted to do it fast. Referee brings them back though, and a chance for them to load the box with blue shirts. John O'Toole's left foot behind it. Can he drop this into a dangerous area and cause panic in this Blues uh, Bulls defence? Stra straighten it up. Ask questions for the keeper. Does he have to come and get it? There is Tool swinging it in towards Ruiz. The header comes in, the flag's gone up. It was a good chance as well. Thea Haridis, but the flag had gone up. The header came in from Klug, I think, again, but it wouldn't have counted. Bright 10 minutes at the start of the second half, though, for Brindabella. Yep, yep. Spurred on by the goal. Substitution of a key player from the opposition. They know, just one goal. And they are so close to... Turning this all around. Here's Gant. Sent forward looking for the run of Harrington and he's run the channel well. But he hasn't got the pace to take on Ben Safiabo. It's Klug. Tool wins the header, asks Schaefer to get on his bike and Wurchon was back there to win. It's only as far as Alexandra Ridley though. Now Tool. Now Lawrence has got in behind. Can he find the delivery? Zach Lawrence drills one in and Tool flicks it up. Schaefer's in there too. It's going to fall for Gunter. Sedavolo. Giving it away. 
but Alexandra Ridley's won it back and then slides into the challenge. Harrington saw that one coming. It's another limping body for Narabunda. Schaefer. Afiabo. Now Cossettini. Steps away from the challenge, looks for the run of Tool and just over hits that one. But these are much more promising signs for those of a Blues persuasion. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. The pl players starting to open up a little bit. Some of those rapid combinations that they like to put together. You can see they've worked on the training ground are starting to come together. And as we said at the start of the second half, the next goal is critical. And if the Bulls get it, you think they're home and home and dry. If the Blues get it, we've got a cup tie on under the lights in Coolwell. The mentality of Narrabunda now is defend that next goal with McDonald's. everything. Sorry to cut you off there for a second, Mitch. Sorry about that. Okay. But yeah, if they can... They know, just don't give that sniff. Don't give that second goal. Shot from distance, and it's just faded away. Gant tried his luck. McDonald was struggling. Did he it strike did, the post? It was desperately close, and it didn't look like it should have been. Well, McDonald's was, was maybe a deflection. I'm not sure what. Scrambling across goal, wasn't he? And yeah. Didn't look comfortable at all. Got away with it on that occasion. Gant's going to win this in midfield. But Ruiz is going to send it straight back into the engine room. Schaefer sliding in on the challenge. But Matsula was just too quick for him. And here's a chance for Mialakis to take on Afiabo. Good, strong, firm challenge from the Blues fullback. He's had a match by the second half. Definitely still think he can contribute to, to the way they attack. If he can get forward. Here is Afiabo in his defensive role. Falls for Ganson. That bobbled horribly. Could stay in. In the end, he's turned into a decent chip, but. Too much pace from Josh Gunter. Good technique from Lena Ferrosi there. <laughs> He'd like to be out there, wouldn't he? I think he would. Still looks in wonderful shape. Very good footballer. Here's Ruiz. Now Clug. Huge opportunity if they go left. Tried to go that go. way through yes. Alexandra Ridley and Afiabo. Here you go. That's good football. Afiabo over halfway. Tries to send it looking long for Tool. If he wins, this could be a chance for Lawrence, but Russell was there. He's done quite a good job at left back, you know. Here's Alexandra Ridley winning the challenge not once and then gets a free kick. Karapanagos with the foul. Shouts of. Uh, Send him off Send there, him which off. would have been a bit harsh. I think so. It's a yellow card in for Paraganakos. Par and what's happened here? He's been given the red. Well, he hasn't been booked in the first half, has he? Yeah. I don't think he has. We've missed something. I think he's got that one wrong. I've got two yellow cards. Mialakis and Skuros. And I think he's no, got Skuros and Karabanikos yeah. mixed up here, I believe. Yeah, he, certainly, he certainly has. Shouldn't have, been to a, have shouldn't be a second yellow for Karapanagos. I think he has got the wrong guy here, and I think he'll be let off. He's apologised. He has. He's definitely yeah. got the wrong guy. It was Nasoskuros, 16, with the card in the first half, and uh, Karapanagos. It was 16, was it? 16 in the first half and six in the second, and I think that's. They've both got both got goatee beards as well, so. <laughs> I mean, the best part of it is that we've arrived at the, the right outcome before it's too late. Tool swings this in towards the far post. Chance here, the header oh. is wide of goal. Real chance that for Brindabella Blues. It goes begging. It was a substitute, Curtis Schaefer, who got up, and he looked certain to score once he won the header. The crowd certainly thought it was in. We thought it was in. And now Bunda. Beautiful delivery yeah. from Tool again, but Bunda... The nerves, you can you can feel the. Well, we've had four goals and we've had a red card rescinded. <laughs> and a couple of woodworks. 
It's been everything you could expect from an early round tie in the FFA Cup. Magic of the Cup under the lights in Coolwell. Certainly some nerves surrounding these goal kicks. They might have to look at an alternative. Here goes Mialakis and he's been brought down by Cosatini and he'll probably be in the book as well. Is that Cosatini? Can't really argue with that one. No. I think Mialakis... He may have been option through the middle a little bit later on I if they're defending in numbers and they can just send him I really use think his so. pace. I really think so. He's an intelligent player too. He knows when to turn and face and maybe wind down the clock, go a little bit wider. So, Well, the Bulls haven't looked likely from open play in the second half, but maybe they can do something from a set piece as well. Carabanagos. Spoke highly of their set piece delivery in that first half, so I'll see this as their best opportunity. Carapanagos, who was the man who was reprieved, digs that one towards the far post. He's been kept in play. Real chance here. And there's a shout for a penalty as Mialakis went down under the challenge of McDonald and the defender. Big calls yeah. from the Bulls bench as well. To be fair, the referee was in position, but oh, it was close. We don't have an advantage of a replay screen here, unfortunately, no. but it's massive shouts. Anyway, here's Alexander Ridley, and he's shown too much of that to Karapanagos, and he looks for Mialakis, but he'd gone just a slightly too early, and Lip. in the end, he'd need to be in a whippet to get after that one anyway. It's ramped up. Here's Alexander Ridley. Gunter. Alexander Ridley again. Looks for Lawrence. It's a slow pitch. It's not that slow, though. He's not going to be able to make that. There's calls of substitution here. Okay, we're going to see some changes. We're going to see Danny Babich, last season's top goal scorer, the non-impact sub, as he called himself, comes on for Cosatini and seven goals last season for Babich. They could do with one tonight. Interesting where they position him. Is he going to be wide left? Is he going to be? There doesn't seem to be any adjustments to this front line. He's gone out to the left-hand side at the moment of the midfield three, or the midfield four, I should say. Well, it looks like three or four. Ruiz has moved forward as well. It's a bit of a tactical reshuffle here. Yeah, I think this may just be for the set piece, Ruiz to win the, the first ball here. Or maybe they're going to go three at the back. But certainly, yeah, no, you're right. I think it's tool. Ruiz has distinctly stepped forward here. Uh, oh, Ruiz, hold up. <laughs> yeah, Ruiz is going back now, I think... Uh, but still wouldn't be surprised if they do go three at the back and throw everybody forward. They've got 25 minutes to find a way back into this cup tie. Lawrence is going to win a free kick here. Ball swung towards the far post. Chance for Babbage. Didn't get it right. But there's going to be opportunities, you'd feel, before the end of this one. Yep. Ruiz mistimes it. Gunter wins it. And Alexander Ridley sends it towards Schaefer. That. Yeah, it's easy for Hajduk. Mialakis. Hajduk once more. Jesse Gantz put in a huge amount of work throughout the 65 minutes we've played. Time running out for the Blues. There's Lawrence. The runs. Good header at the back again by Zane Wurchon. He's been outstanding. Gantz in with Afiabo. And we're going to see a substitution for the Narabunda Bulls very shortly. Yes. We're going to see it right now, right in fact. Now. Some fresh legs in that midfield, perhaps. Yeah. John Carapanagos has run his race. Jeremy Salah is coming on. Karabanikos also on a yellow card as well, of course, so probably a good call. He's walking off the field. He was going to walk off five minutes ago when the referee went <laughs> to send him off. <laughs> Bit harsh. I mean, it was a tackle. It wasn't worth two yellows. No, it certainly wasn't. He's done well, the midfielder. Yeah. Been a good battle with him and then Alexandro Ridley in the middle of the park. He's put a good shift in, but there certainly is a need for something to change here for Narabunda. Can they slow this momentum? Those fresh legs should give them... Extra enthusiasm in the centre of the park. Jeremy Salah looking to provide it. Here's Harrington. Come on, 
I did expect Danny Babbage to be a little higher up the pitch. Maybe he'll push that way towards the end as we get into desperation times. Yep. Ball into the area. Ruiz declines to head it, tried to bring it down. Maybe not the best option. Yeah. Well, he gets away with overplaying, doesn't he? And Matsula couldn't punish him. And here's a chance for the Blues on the break. They look slightly the fitter of the two sides, don't they? Yep. They look like they're going to finish the stronger. But the damage may have already been done. Well, that was, I suppose, thinking you back to my pre-game prediction, that was probably what lent it in their favour with, with my forecast. But, like you said, if you can see three goals early in the first half, it's difficult. His tool, he's got Lawrence ahead of him. Skips away from the challenge, Zach Lawrence. And here's a chance for Brenda Bella. Good ball in as well. And... Needed to be cleared and was. And that's a good first touch from Salah to send it forward. It's going to come back, though, if Gunter can get hold of it. He can't, and McCauley steps away. Looks to hold it up and does well, and Ruiz, though, ends that. Gant. McCauley back to Gant again, but it's sent forward now. The referee's offside. calls offsides. Zach Lawrence wanted the, uh, the advantage. Somali Mohamed is coming on. The final change for Brenda Bella. And it's Dylan Alexander Ridley who's coming off. He does such an important role for them at the back of the midfield. I wonder if he's injured or if he's completely. He looks a bit tired, knackered. so. <laughs> really put in a shift. He's done very well for. Almost 70 minutes of this one. But time running out for Brindabella. Time for them to take drastic action. They need two goals to even force extra time. He gave them real balance in that midfield. So it'll be interesting whether Somali can do the same role or add something to it. Here's Gunter. Ruiz. Tool and Schaefer looking to combine. Speaking of which, and Cerevolo is charging this down. He's still got plenty of energy. Narabunda definitely, yeah, you know, just desperately needs someone to sit in that six type role to screen some passes that are going through. Mohammed's first touch is positive. Mialakis and thunderous header from Klug. His tool. Looking to feed it down the line towards Salavolo. He looks like they're way back into it, doesn't he, if they're going to get one. John O'Toole? Definitely. They've not really tested this keeper as often as they would have liked have they, either, have they? The it's, Blues? A, it's a challenge, though, for, for Toole because he's kind of the guy you want on the ball but also on the end of it. Mialakis from Matsula. Committed. Harrington. Committed numbers forward here. Narabunda. Gant. Space out wide for McCauley. Gone too early. Free kick and he's kicked the ball away. Lucky to escape from that one. You had that little quiet word. Which wastes more time. <laughs> 20 minutes to go plus stoppage time. Knowing smile on the face of the substitutes. He knew exactly what he was doing. He certainly did. Here's Klug. Raffi Arbo. Reverted to a sort of a left midfield role. Mohamed. Looks Raffi Arbo. And there was Skouros. Ruiz needed to be alert. So Gunther. Nice touch from Tool. Now Lawrence again has got in behind Russell, who's racing back to challenge, and he's brought him down. No ball That'll be there. a free kick. And he'll be fortunate to escape sanction as well. Another great opportunity, though, for the Blues to load the penalty area with their tall timber. This Ruiz ball. and Klug go forwards. This ball has surely got to land on top of the goalkeeper. Who, as we mentioned, isn't the tallest. Not the tallest, and, and the mistake from the goal kick still fresh in his mind. Can John O'Toole find something for the Blues? 
Mohammed stood on the front post. Whipped into the near post. There is a whip into that near post, and it's good clearance from Skulos. Harrington does well to bring it down as well. Just, just enough, didn't he? He's suffering with a bit of cramp, Duncan Harrington. He's put everything into it tonight, the skipper. Here's Babich playing it right back at the moment. Lawrence. Oh, so there's no one to go back to, though, to bounce that pass. Now Tool. Anywhere will do for the Bulls at the moment. Ruiz on his bike and substitute. Jeremy Salah was chasing him, fresh legs, hoping to cause a problem. Here's Mohamed. Not sure who's playing where at the moment. That's very fluid. Having Clark. said that, they're, they're, they're holding the ball quite well, building attacks. Narabunda sort of certainly appear to be somewhat out of legs at the moment. Could be a long last 15 or so minutes. They're hanging in there at the moment, the Bulls. Like I say, haven't threatened since Atkins left the fray. We hope for their sake he's not too badly hurt. Mohammed's challenging with McCauley and it's going to fall for Ruiz. Looks to chip it into the danger area and it's a, it's a white header. shirt that clears it. It's not away though. Falls for Mohammed. He's got Lawrence as the option wide, but space now for himself. Lawrence. They need a little bit more urgency, you feel. Mohammed goes down and that's a free kick. as a challenge that Salah didn't really have to make either. Need to make it. We're going to see a final change from Narabunda. John Ozalanado is going to play his final card, unless, of course, he goes to extra time. In which case, they all get one more one sub. More sub. Okay. He wants to make his change. I'll be very interested what this change is. Well, is it the skipper? It might well be Duncan Harrington, I think, who's worked hard and he's going to come off to a rousing reception. Liam Boyle is going to replace him didn't look like scoring tonight Duncan Hunter did he but he didn't did his job well which was to hold the ball up and bring others into play and it, it was his creation of space that allowed Nick Mac Mac Atkins and Nick Mialakis to take advantage and that's when he looked great you know he, him come, he came short the death was provided by the other two and that was when he looks good however he's got no one going past him it leaves that question of those centre backs are going to follow him and win that ball can Tool find a delivery a decent one into the danger area and the keeper's come and got two good fists on that one that's exactly where that ball needed to we go question whether he would be able to do that and he's done that very well his Babbage looking to reload into the area anywhere will do for Mialakis as well I think we've seen the pattern of the game set for this final 15 minutes so. a bit too early to retreat for the Bulls like I said it's that awkward time they want the free kick for offsides, and they're going to get one. So both sides played their hands as far as substitutions are concerned. If the Blues are going to do it, it's going to have to be the 11 on the field. They're going to have to do it soon. 15 minutes plus stoppage time to go. Afiabo underneath this. Again, the more logical targets were central. They've gone out to the right. It's a foul. A free kick. It's tiredness sets in, which it will no doubt will do in this final quarter of an hour. One mistake or one piece of magic from either side will either seal this cup tie or make it a very lively ending. Maybe, looking maybe for the, the neutral, we, uh, we're hoping for a Brenda Biller goal. It's certainly been entertaining. It has been. All the goals in the first half. That one's in towards McDonald. He's got to come and punch, and he does. Hey, Mohamed hey, is away here, That's and here's a chance. Win. It's four on four at the moment. Carry. Ball forward towards John O'Toole. Chance in the penalty air for Toole, and he slides it in, and we have got a cup tie. 14 minutes to go. John O'Toole scores again. And the Blues are right back in this. What a magnificent pass, though, from Somali there. He could not have knocked a better pass. 
perfect weight was asking to be finished Tool and John O'Toole obliged. To, he did not have to break stride. It made it as easy as possible. And that is all him. He's won the ball deep. He's carried. He's delivered that pass. I mean, that's outstanding. And maybe a glance across the bench to his manager saying, perhaps I should have started, <laughs> should have started this started. one. But an inspired substitution regardless. You want your subs to make an impact, and he's certainly he done certainly so. did. And Danny Babbage, the other substitute, wants a free kick. He's not going to get one. But how cool was the finish from Tool? Yeah, it, was, it was slick. And this, is, this now makes it very, very interesting because, like I said, the momentum is entirely with Brindabella. The legs appear to be Brindabella. It's just not the score. Here's Lawrence. Russell has battled with him so well all night. The fullback, and he wins that battle again. So that Lawrence is furious with himself. He's protected that space. He's done such a good job. They're going to throw the kitchen sink at this. Our Brindabella. Here's Ruiz looking to slide in Saravolo, but not on the same wavelength as his skipper, the young midfielder. Johnny Zalonado is giving some instructions about tactical change, I think, as well. It has to be a, an adjustment. Does he drop one of these front two back into the midfield? What does he do? It's a nervous time as a coach. McCauley. Wow. They all miss it. Maybe there's the tiredness. Just Gunther, Gunther wants to get on with this. He wants to get on with it quickly. Good win by Gantz. And again by McCauley. Ruiz, bit of head tennis. Mohamed continues it. And that's a loose pass as well, but the control from Afiabo isn't great, but he's recovered. Schaefer. It's made a bit of a difference as well since he's come on. Now here's Lawrence. Looking to take on Russell. Stands him up again, but Lawrence into the area. Still going, Lawrence. And Gantz stops his run. He'd be up there for man of the match for me, Jesse Gantz. He's had a very good match. Ruiz steps inside. Mohamed, lovely touch towards Gunther. Couldn't quite keep it in play. Certainly brought something to the team, Somali Mohamed. I agree, totally. He's always a wonderful technical player. Perhaps it was something where they didn't see him lasting 90 and having an impact now. But Here's Salah. Looks for Gantz, but Ruiz sticks out a leg. Now here's a bit of space for Lawrence. Looks for Tool, and why not? Already on two goals. John O'Toole wound one up from range. Falls for Mohamed. It's all one-way traffic at the moment. Gunther. Looks to deliver. It's a it's tired delivery, pass. though. Babic swings it into the danger area, and Tool was there. It might fall for Schaefer. Looks to get it away from his feet and get the shot away, and it's Skuros who stands it's, strong. And it's backs to the wall stuff, though, for Narabunda. Salah just says to Liam Ball, chase that, son. So entering that Ten final, minutes ten to go, minutes. Mitch. Ten minutes between the Bulls and a match against Canberra FC. Both, both benches incredibly nervous. Ten minutes between the ends. Oh, could be potentially the end to Brindabella Blues Cup run at the first hurdle. Somewhere they've fallen for the last two seasons as well. Last time they got through this round was in 2016 when they gave Goldman Strikers a bit of a spanking 6-0. A year before that they beaten the Strikers 2-1 and went out to Canberra Olympic who went on to win the trophy in 2015. At the moment they're staring down the barrel of a third successive round three defeat unless something can happen in his final few minutes. There's this a free kick. now. second Skuros. yellow card, is it? He might be in trouble. And uh, Shane Lyson-Smith is a little bit generous there, maybe. Possibly just not enough to warrant that yellow card, but it's a fine line. John O'Toole fancies this. Lining it up some what 30 meters out from goal on that left foot already with two goals to his name Theo Haridis lining up a three-man wall has tool got the technique to find something here All I was out on him. it's tool bends it round the wall the keepers oh. on it and John O'Toole the FFA Cup is made for heroes and he is a hat-trick hero 
for the Brindabella Blues. And with nine minutes to go, they're back on level terms. It's a howler for poor Theo Heredius in the goal. It's one he'll want to forget. But Brindabella have probably got what their performance in the second half has deserved, but perhaps I, I think so. not in the way <laughs> they expected it. They've, I mean, they've just been fortunate with that first goal, and certainly that one just then, they've been let back into the game. And you know what? Who's to say they won't go on and do the job now? We said that second goal would be critical. The poor goalkeeper, like we said before, he's not the number one choice. I'm sure Alex Belperio, who is the number one choice, is watching this here from Interstate and cursing the fact he couldn't be back here. You don't like to blame the keeper, do you? But that one there was yeah. just a little bit unfortunate. I mean, in his defence, I've seen top-level Premier League goalkeepers, Massimo Taibi, for oh, example. Oh, that's the first name that comes to mind, Ross. <laughs> doing that for Manchester United. So it is something that happens, unfortunately. And when you're the goalkeeper, you are exposed. But for John O'Toole, that's what his endeavours deserved. He's got a hat-trick. Another hat-trick. Another FFA Cup hat-trick. And like you say, who's to say this one's finished? Oh, We're looming for extra time at the moment, but have the balls got a response? McDonald's has it. And we go back to that penalty shout as well, oh, Mitch. Yeah, it springs to mind. And they're the little things you need to go your way to advance in the cup. Lawrence tries to get this one forward, but it's the Bulls who come away. Now here's a chance for McCauley, but that's overhit by Matsula. And psychologically now, that's a huge dent to Narabunda. That goal on half-time, we look at turning points, and there's plenty of them in this game. And as you mentioned, Mitch, that goal right on half-time changes the complexion of the half-time team talk. It's changed the complexion of the match. Uh, without a doubt. And anyone, anyone who's watched football and been involved with the sport knows that that, that momentum shifts with that goal. And what was meant to be comfortable now, look at the way they're flowing forward. Schaefer. You have to say the substitutions that Brenda Bella have made have paid dividends, haven't they? They've yep. all, all done their part and Babbage is looking to do his, looking to fight away and get through. It's going to come for Schaefer. Tries his luck from range. And Theoridis again looked a little bit uncomfortable. With the last type of strike you want coming at him, something dropping short Just like that. Drops short and skips off the surface. There are cramps, there are... What must be going through the poor lad's head right now, though? I don't want the ball near me. <laughs> Can one of his teammates come up trumps? Or are we going to have another half an hour? At least it's not in the middle of winter, Mitch. We'll That's be freezing right. by now. Especially I wore shorts tonight, Russ. So. <laughs> you did, you are a brave man. I mean, you have been Southside in Canberra before, haven't you? Correct, correct. Here's Ruiz. Maybe we won't need the extra half an hour. We've still got five minutes plus stoppage time to go. And whatever was said in that changing room, uh, Brinda Bella at half time, it's certainly paid dividends in this yeah. half because they have yeah. been the dominant force. And this is what the FFA Cup does for you. It's never over. It's never three nil over. down, back to three three. Don't forget that, obviously, that forced substitution early in the second half of Atkins. It just has deprived the outlet that the Bulls had. Yeah, you look at s s several turning points. Like we said, half-time, the goal, the, the loss of Atkins, the uh, the tackle from Mohammed in the middle of the park, the yep. substitution. Yep. It's, it's those critical points have gone Brindis Bell away, one after another, and that's what ne is needed for the comeback. Clug sends that forward, looking for Lawrence. He's managed to stay on side here, and Adrian Russell wins the ball. You have to feel for Narabunda at the moment because if they do go on and lose this, there's plenty of players out there who don't deserve to be on the losing no, side. I agree. But someone's got to lose and someone's got to lose between now and the end of the match or the extra time or we might get a penalties. I mean, if we get extra time, and anyone will tell you, you, know, you, you condition yourself over many games. Preseason only does so much. Here's a chance in the penalty. Yeah, Schaefer goes down. He's dreaming if he thinks oh, he's getting a penalty for that. I knew the diehards are calling for that one. <laughs> We'd done way too easily even yeah. if there was contact. <laughs> Would have been very surprising if that was given. Very much like Lacazette <laughs> on Sunday. You'll yeah. like that one, Mitch. Quite soft. <laughs> Ruiz. Showing off. Just advancing forward. Here's a chance for Lawrence into the penalty area himself. Still going, Lawrence. And Desperate to get when on he needed that. across, oh. he couldn't. And there goes the calf. Yep. Seized up with cramp, you'd think. Let's hope it's nothing worse. It did appear to be cramped, but... But you've got a f squad of Premier League players that you train three, four times a week with Correct. them. And these guys 
probably once or twice a week after, like you said, a full day of work. And this extra half an hour, if they do go, it's going to be really We'd hard for them. not be looking forward to it. I mean, it, it, it's hard for, like I said, any player training multiple times through the week, let alone guys in a midweek fixture, all those things that you said are in the way. It, it's, it's a nightmare. Um, tactics almost go out the window. But how good is this? Live football on Bar TV Sports, FFA Cup action, six goals. Plenty of goals, plenty of drama. Drama posts, both sides have hit the woodwork. <laughs> We've had a send-off and then rescinded send-off. Players going down left, right and centre like skittles. Grandstands moving. There's more players in the middle of the park stretching as well. Yep. I'd, I'd be suggesting to either side, this is the moment to get some fluids into here, to get a little chat about what we want to do. It's almost like that stage where other side thinking, well, we want to score now. <laughs> <laughs> We'll chat, we'll, extra chat half half an hour. we'll chat later. <laughs> We're talking about the uh, penalty shout. I think the word is that they were hoping that there was a shirt pull. Yeah, they were and hoping uh, for a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, Narabana have made the change that I suggested earlier, which is uh, someone else taking the goal kicks. Leaves them a little bit exposed if the ball comes straight back. Of course. I think, I think confidence is, is so fragile. Well, they need to get round him now, don't they, Theoridis? And yeah. if this does go to extra time, they need to get round him and uh, give him their support because they're going to need him for an extra half an hour. They might well need him for a penalty shootout. Uh, exactly. He has got a chance to redeem himself. You know, it, it's sort of one of those games you're looking to, you know, I think Narabunda would deserve the opportunity to, to take this game to extra time and make something of it. It would be a little harsh if it was gone in 90. Brenda Bella will be sitting there saying, we don't care, one iota. Well, it'll be gone in 90 seconds if it is, Mitch, because that's all we've got left, blood stoppage time. The committing number's four, though. Russell looks oh. for the ball through, and the flag goes up against Liam Boyle, and this won't count, he's missed anyway. The flag went up, but for a moment, he must have thought this was his most chance to shine. What a mistake at the back it could have been. They're very relieved, I think it was Clug, bounced over his foot. I can hear Jeremy Butler from behind the fence shouting instructions Shaffer to his team. appears to have moved to the right-hand side. That's a permanent switch. Here's Ruiz. I think they're con conscious now of committing too many numbers for just for these last sort of couple of seconds and throwing away all the good work. Is their hero in white yet to emerge? 45 seconds plus stoppage time to go. They looked home and hosed at 3-0 just before half-time, but... A goalkeeping error allowed John O'Toole to score, and since then, Toole has scored twice more, and he's off and running again here, John O'Toole. He'll have to do it all on his own. Still going, looks for the runner, Schaefer, but couldn't quite squeeze him in. Looks like he could play at a high level still as well, John O'Toole. Oh, I think he could comfortably do it. The scouting mission for you, Mitch. <laughs> well, it, it's, it's one of the nice things, though, when you come and see these sides that you don't see as often. Who has developed, who's where, certain work opportunities changed, and you know, are they available to come back to Premier League, perhaps? And how good is Bar TV Sports around the country for doing this? Outstanding. We love it. And That's there's a chance for Schaefer to send it back towards goal. Schaefer has oh landed on the roof goodness. of the net. Can Thea Haridis was backpedalling, and dear, oh dear. If for a that, moment. If that goes <laughs> in, I don't know. I think our little stand falls over. Well, there's a chat here between the referee and the linesman, the assistant referee, I should say. But again, so they gave him back the goal kick, and that's what happened. What do you think they're chatting about here? The ball is not in the right position for a goal kick. The referee's going across to talk to Theoridis for some reason. Interesting. Can't maybe he had, had a conversation. Maybe he had a chat with the linesman unless he's positioned the ball not outside the six yard box and taking that kick quickly I don't know but well in that case then if it goes in it doesn't count does well, it well you would think you'd have to bring it back to play that would have made it very oh. interesting oh, absolutely now then here's a chance for the balls and Boyle oh. almost got away and Clugs brought him down and he could walk here Boyle was clean through this could be red and this could it be another be. change wow another dramatic tri twist in this FFA Cup tie that just keeps giving in stoppage time at the end of the match. Oh, with an opportunity for this free kick. Clug walks. Wow. And like you said, if you'd gone into extra time with you know, two teams of 11, you would be backing Brindabella with the, with the momentum. But now, 
disconsolately walking from the field. Sklagi felt he needed to make the challenge because Boyle was in behind. Absolutely. It's possibly a good card to take. Possibly. But if they lose, then that, like I said, the league campaign is affected. Where's this going? Where is this ending? Is this the moment for Narabunda? They've not looked likely the whole of the second half. We're two, two minutes, minutes into, injury, into time. injury time. Jeremy Salah has lined this one up. What a moment. Can he make himself a Narabunda hero? Can he emulate John O'Toole's free kick from the other end? McDonald's lined up his wall. It's Salah. He's oh. gone short. They've teed it up here for Gantz. And that was a training ground routine that didn't quite pay off. Thumped clear in the end. The scenario at play. But now we've got Narabunda with a numerical advantage. It's full time, Mitch. The whistle's gone. You would have thought. Strange decision not not going directly at goal with a free kick. Nerves. You know. But where's this going to end up? Oh. It was 3 0 to Narabunda just before the break. And. Brinda Bella pulled one back when John O'Toole scored off a goalkeeper error. Then Toole scored again. And then another goalkeeper error from a free kick makes it 3 all. We thought the momentum was with Brinda Bella Blues. But that moment just there where Stephen Clug was sent off for bringing down Liam Boyle has perhaps swung it back in the favour of the Bulls. Uh, yes and no. I mean, a 10-man Brinda Bella still look fitter than Narrabunda right now. Fitter. But there has to be a restructure. They have to be careful. Well, both sides can make a change in, her, in extra time now that's the uh, rule changes that allow the teams to do that so maybe the fresh legs from the bench we've got um, Jacob Leonard's the only outfield player for the Blues and Zach James or we've got Billy Mulakis and Dimitri Mialakis for Narabunda do, do Narabunda have the legs to press and, and utilise that you know, extra man advantage I mean I don't think so but like I said, it's, it is up in the air. That red card really makes it interesting. The FFA Cup, don't you just love it? <laughs> the competition that just keeps on giving. And what we like to say here on Bar TV Sports is we've got half an hour of free football for you. Absolutely. And possibly even a penalty shootout. A little bonus on your Tuesday night. It's been a difficult one for the match officials, but that was a fairly easy decision for the man in the middle, wasn't it? I don't think there's any argument from anyone. No complaints from those in blue and like I said I mean Boyle was away um, possibly a, a good card to take only time will tell I, I wonder if, if you're the Bulls management you sit there and say I actually prefer him to have kicked on finish the goal and, and call it a day of course so like I said the red card will be uh, greatly appreciated if Brindabella go on and, and win this fixture Jolas Alonado there is having a word with his team and figuring out what they can do to, to stop this what was a Brindabella onslaught in the last half an hour of that second half they really put the foot down and they deserve to get back into the game and in John O'Toole real class act up front and you still think he's got something in the tank he could even get a fourth goal here he, he looks like the guy that will make the difference he really does uh, I, I just don't see anyone on that Narrabunda side at the moment that are going to make the difference and, and win this game so do they think Boyle showed a fair bit of space uh, pace there good turn of pace down the middle Mialakis has got some good gas as well we've seen that in this half and and especially as teams tire do you run the risk perhaps of just leaving someone just cheating oh, a little if I, you like I, up front and then you have maybe to. you have to I mean uh, if, again if I was never been right now I'd be sitting there and it'd be a a, a four five one of sorts and hoping that Brenda Bella because as they've shown even early in the first half they tend to commit numbers forward um, with one man down committing too many numbers there's going to be opportunities at the back of those tiring legs so that's certainly my approach if I was Narrabunda um, but looking at this team talk here with Brenda Bella uh, it looks like they're going to be st stick to their principles and they're going to go at this game they're going to keep trying to dominate possession well Jeremy Butler can't give the team talk of course because he suspended Salina Fiorese in there barking the instructions telling his teams what to do very tactically minded and if a uh, Canberra FC's management are watching. They're still no closer to knowing who they'll be playing certainly in the next round. They certainly are not. They're getting there. I don't think they'll fancy either of these sides. It will be an easy pushover for them. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of quality in that Canberra FC team, of course, but uh, that's the magic of the cup. You never know. No, no MPL side, MPL one side, should I say, looks forward to the challenge of an MPL two side in competition. There's always that, obviously, that chip in the shoulder, a point to prove, uh, especially in the cup in a one-off fixture. You've got all this to come, Mitch, yeah. against O'Connor Knights. We, we, like I said, you, you, I wouldn't say you look forward to it. Um, 
sometimes you actually think it's easier coming up against opposition that you've played regularly and you know and know a little bit more about what to expect. Um, so, yeah, like I said, O'Connor is a, a fantastic side. They've got some quality footballers in there and, uh, and a very experienced coach in, in Mira Trinity. Well, we hope the generator lasts this extra half hour. <laughs> this Danny fills it up. It's question marks. Daniel filled it up with uh, petrol <laughs> at halftime. Can't afford to fill it up too much with petrol in Canberra because it's very expensive. It is expensive. <laughs> Who's got the most petrol in these time? Teams left. So. Nice segue there, Mitch. You like that? <laughs> very good. <laughs> Not bad for nine o'clock at night. <laughs> so half an hour, potentially penalties to come to find the winner of this. Just a recap if you've uh, joined us late on Bar TV Sports FFA Cup third round qualifying here in Canberra Narabunda goals from Matt Atkins after 16 minutes Nick Mialakis after 32 and Atkins again after 38 had them 3-0 up and coasting Trono Tool in the first minute of added time at the end of the first half scored to bring it back to 3-1 then goals from Tool in the 76th and 81st minute two in five minutes from Tool the second from a free kick that goalkeeper, Bunda, goalkeeper Theo, Harad, uh, Theo Haradias will want to forget about but the sending off of Stephen Clug in stoppage time at the end of the match has maybe just swung this back in favour of Narabunda. The adjustment appears to be Denny Babichin in a left-back type role. And here's Afiabo. Afiabo going into the middle. Wow. Babich. Schaefer. Afiabo. Just prods that one forwards. Good win at the back by Wurchon. Afiabo will knock this one back towards his keeper and they need to be alert as Liam Boyle was sniffing Gunther he's rather got himself into a bit of a hole there and here's McCauley couldn't profit and there's another player down with Cramp there's a chance through the middle for Schaefer he's onside Schaefer chips it over the goalkeeper chance for the Brinda Bella Blues 3-0 down 4-3 up the FFA Cup continues to deliver in Canberra. Another superb ball over the top. It's taken less than a minute for them to score. Substitution immediately being made by Brenda Bella. Curtis Schaefer, though, what a great finish. He needed to keep his cool, and he did. You can imagine this is defensive reinforcements now, knowing they're down at 10 men with extra time to sort things out. Who would have thought you wait for a winner and it often happens, doesn't it? So soon. But Schaefer showed his pace. He got in. He needed to keep his cool. And he finished adroitly over the goalkeeper. I mean, certainly the, the message has got to be from Narabunda's bench that they've still got the extra man. If they can push on here and put some pressure, there's no reason that they can't make this 4 all. Incredible match. <laughs> it's just what we wanted Whatever for the first wanted. match of the season. Possibly one shout out is obviously to the ball kids who are, are hanging around for extra time as well. They're still here doing their job. Absolutely. They've got school in the morning. <laughs> I mean, you've got school in the morning, I've funny enough. Got <laughs> <laughs> Mitch at Canberra Grammar. Correct. Your role there now, head of football? Is yeah, that what they call you? Coordinator of football. Sees me looking after the under nines right through to the under 18s and overseeing the, the whole program. Big football program at that school. Yeah. Maybe they're tuning in to listen to us uh, on so. the commentary it's, tonight. It's I'm watching it. some football. Well, this has had everything and it's still not done yet. Plenty of time left for Narabunda to find their way back into this. We expected some goals. I didn't think we expected seven. And a red card. So for the first time, Narabunda now are going to be given time on the ball. So what did they do? Well, they trail for the first time in the night. Have they got a response? And that, that defensive high line that Brindabella have had is gone. That substitution was Jacob Leonard for Zach Lawrence. So Adrian Russell's seen off the winger and is rewarded someone with a fresh pair of legs, fresh pair of legs. for the extra Fantastic. half an hour. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> Must be horrible being a fullback. <laughs> Extra time, the last thing you want to see is that fresh fresh substitute run on and match up next to you. Yeah, well done, mate. You've seen him off. Here's <laughs> another one. McDonald's 
with the goal kick. One in midfield by Matsula. Fiabo just clears it towards the Blues bench. Notable shift though from Brindabella here. They've scored the goal, getting numbers in behind, leaving just two up top. Not a bad man to leave on his own up top. Already got a hat trick tonight. Yeah, spot on. It's going to be a test though. It's uh, having played so long on the counter attack, Narabunda, to now have to control possession, build attack against a, a packed defence. It's hard to change that mentality. And they'll need to force it at some stage. Yep. Because they're the ones chasing the game now. Here's Matsula. Hajduk. No rush at the moment. There's plenty of time, as we mentioned. Here's Russell. I mean, it's worth pointing out, with such an early goal and extra time, the team talk that they've just given the Bulls management is, is out the window. Well, I'm probably certainly said, don't go too high and get caught. Yeah. <laughs> and that's exactly what's happened yep. in the first minute. Here's Afiabo. He's still got bags of energy, and he's got away from one. And he's been fouled by Hajduk who may find his way into the referee's notebook. The fourth Narabunda player to see yellow, along with the yellow and red for the Blues. It's not been an easy game for the referee, is he? But he's been, done it quite well. I think so. It's, it, it, it's the manner in which he's handled himself which will be pleasing for the coaches, you know. He's been approachable. Certainly hasn't got lost in the hype of the game. And remain Ru calm. Ruiz behind the dead ball, and he just sends out one for Tool to chase. The willing runner, but that's a good piece of defending at the back there by Zane Wirchon. Should be a goal kick. Yep. Football always seems to deliver. And it's certainly delivering tonight in the suburbs. Suburb of Corwell in southern Canberra is watching. An FFA Cup classic, you'd say. Well, we've remembered. There's been moments of quality. Afiabo just volleys that straight back down the field. and It's great that it's, we're bringing this to you live as well. It gives people a chance to watch this kind of thing, which otherwise would just live in the annals of the memory banks. Probably not so great for the players because they, their goal from a yard or two, which they <laughs> score from 50 a bit, few years from now. Uh, it's suddenly it's yeah. preserved. There's no arguing. It's on the camera. We see some good ones tonight, and maybe there's some more to come. Is Mialakis skips away from Afiabo. He's back to challenge, and he'll win the free kick as well. And I think Mialakis goes down with a bit of cramp as well. And rather sportingly, Ben Afiabo. Well, he'll, he'll, uh, he'll happily keep him down and tell him to stretch as long as necessary. <laughs> It's a bit cynical of you, Mitch. You might even get him a water bottle. <laughs> <laughs> Help him off the fields. Yeah. That's the cynic in you. Uh, the coaching football does that to you. Chris Ruiz has avoided the, do I put it here, ref routine. <laughs> and gets on with it. Babich flicks it onto Tool. Tries to return the favour, but didn't get enough on the little flick. Here's Gantz, who will be... things quickly here. One of the players, as mentioned, will be unfortunate to be on the losing side. Skouros is another. Russell. Looks to lift that towards Boyle into the penalty area. And he's trying oh. to get goal sides. And just for a moment, he seemed to get away. Damn, it should be a corner, shouldn't it? Ruiz seemed to have a good, piece of the shirt. Good grip of the shirt, too. Well, it's the blind side of the officials. So if you're going to do it, that's a good place, that's, too. That's when you do it. A set piece for Narabona. We haven't had one of these for a while, so a chance for them to load the penalty area. And that they have done. They've only left Shane Hyduck back, and everybody in a white shirt is pretty much in or around the area. It's won by Skuros. Russell tried to bring it down. Oh. McCauley tried to turn. Can they get this into the penalty That's area once ball. more towards the far post? It might fall here. And the chip in the end didn't have enough on it from Matsula. Right idea. Tried to just delicately lift that over McDonald and there's a, another player down with cramp or an injury. They managed to keep it live and get, get that ball back in that dangerous area. That was 
Certainly where I think if a goal's coming from there, abundance it's going to be something like that. We're going to see Bunda's final change of the match. This is an interesting one. Is it Nim Mialakis who's coming off? He's be replaced by Billy Mulakis. He's done very well, Nim Mialakis. Run himself into the ground. I just feel that they left him doing so much work on the flank that I wonder if it would have been a better option to, like I said, leave him cheap as a nine. Yeah his pace and skill that he might have been an outlet because I haven't seen with all due respect that, that sort of threat there from Narabunda otherwise. He's struggling with cramp below us. His calves will be aching tomorrow morning. And these boys all got to go to work. <laughs> his players getting treatment for cramp behind the goal as well and Mitch is getting treatment for cramp in the commentary <laughs> box. Saravolo tries to push that forward, but it's just gone straight out of play. And he can't keep that in, and he's gone down now. Struggling. Just those little extra stretches, isn't it? The guys at this stage of the season probably haven't done too much of pre-season at this level. No. And when you do, it tends to be just a kick around, I guess. It's, it is really, really difficult. They predominantly get fit through playing football matches. There's certainly a few sessions where you you might touch on tactically where things are at, but the conditioning component probably isn't quite there. Well, as you mentioned, Mitch, as well, they've had a full day's work earlier on, and it's very difficult to do that and then come into this and ask them to play 120 minutes at a high tempo in such an important game. Yeah, totally agree. I, uh, they've done themselves and their clubs proud, I think. I certainly know during my playing days, I didn't actually enjoy the midweek fixes for that exact reason. Little things change, the routines, when you eat, the rest you get. Yeah, again, I mean, it's not like the professionals where they can have a pre-match meal three hours before kickoff. No. These guys are still grafting. Don't, some, don't always have that choice. It's Tool looking to bounce his way through, and it's come from Mohammeds, and he's gone down in the area under the challenge. It was a good foot in, and the flag will go up against Somali Mohammeds. No chance that was a spot kick either. No. Referee right on the spot. Coming into the last four minutes or so. The lights have gone off on the surrounding pitches. The uh, Brindabella Juniors have done their dash for the night. They've packed up. We're still going. We've still got four minutes or so of this half, plus the second half extra time. Decent crowd on that far side, and a fair few in front of us in the commentary position. Oh, oh McDonald's made a hask of this. It's Gantz. Thought oh. about a shot. Opportunity perhaps for Salah, who drives in this deflected off Ruiz. And it's a corner. Big shouts on the Narabona bench for handball. It appeared to strike Ruiz on the chest. And that came from a uh, miscommunication. The goalkeeper signaled to, to clear that ball away. Then it's been left to him on his opposite foot. Should Gant have a shot first time oh, on the left foot? Absolutely. I mean, he's taken every set piece left footed, so. And they've been on the money. Here he goes again, swings it towards that near post. Afiabo with an important header. One touch and deliver. Gant's going to get another opportunity to do just that. Swings it in. And back there. Heading clear is Schaefer, the goal scorer, whose goal, his fourth goal has given them the lead. In fact, I tell a lie, it was Jacob Leonard. So I apologise to Jacob Leonard. Okay, so this is where I feel like their best chances are coming. Gant with a set piece again, swings it towards the far post. The header's won, but McDonald's there. Clutches this one gratefully. Won't be in too much of a hurry to get rid of it, you wouldn't is that, think. Is that for six seconds? Try and hit a corner flag at this stage. Looking for Tool. He looks a little bit tired. The hat trick hero. Putting pressure on and still going Tool. And he might get this. And Theo Haridis gets a bit lucky. Afiabo finds Saravalo. No goalkeeper in at the moment. Here's Afiabo trying to set himself up for a shot. A few challenges firing in in his Tool. Steps away still, John O'Toole. Looking for a free kick, and the referee obliges. Theo Haridis living on the edge again. <laughs> now then, Tool, does he have another pop with the goalkeeper's blunder fresh in mind? Looking at the clock. Yeah, I think so. minute or so to go to the do you, break. You either do that or you play it into the corner and see it to half-time. 
well, there's to ensure there's no counter-attack opportunities. There's but absolutely no one in a blue shirt in the penalty area. Babbage and, and Schaefer are making late runs, but I've got a feeling that this is going to be direct from Tool. And it is. He fizzes it into that area. And this time, Theoharidis is firmly behind it. And well done to him. A little dinky kick instead. Certainly the distribution's a question mark, that's for sure. Mulakis does well. And that one's just thumped back towards him. His tool, good control. Does well, but oh. Narabunza can't keep possession. Crowd getting nice and Larry. I've had a few that's beers. They've had a few, and now it's extra time beers. Thankfully, they look like they've trained for this. <laughs> it's it's <all laughs> still <laughs> been in training since the summer. Yeah. Many years in some cases, I'd imagine. <laughs> Many years. Babich finds Tool. Back to Babich again. Rather see that go towards the corner. May well do just that then. In fact, it's an awful slice by Jacob Leonard. Yeah, I mean, there's more and more really basic areas creeping into this game here. Can't be long left in this half. In which the Blues have taken the lead for the first time. Ruiz is going to win a free kick. And that may well see the end of the half. In fact, has it gone the other way? It must be a Blues free kick, surely. What else could be? It could possibly be a free kick, you wouldn't think. No, he, has. Salah. he has given it to, Brinda, to Narabunda. Not sure what he's seen there, there. There is a question mark. On such moments, do things change? And it looks, for all money, like it was a Blues free kick. As it is, the Bulls have the set play, and Jesse Gantz left foots over it. I mean, again, Narabunda are very fortunate to get this. They've got to make the most of it. There'll be questions asked by Brenda Beller if this goes in. Absolutely. Hit that back post. Keeps We're into stoppage back. time at the end of the first half, and it's Gantz swinging it in, and a chance here. McDonald came, didn't get near. Might fall on the far post for Salah, but he's placed it well over the crossbar. And that's the last action of the first half of extra time. And the goal from Curtis Schaefer within 30 seconds or so of the start of the extra 30 minutes has separated the two sides. We thought the twist of momentum may have gone back to Narabunda's way with the send-off of Stephen Clug just at the end of the game, but yeah, once not, more, not quite. momentum shifts has gone again. Not quite, and, and, and Brindabella have played it well. They got that goal and have immediately dropped off, allowed the Bulls possession, and they don't, just don't know, apart from set pieces, they don't look like an open play, they're capable of, of getting that all-important equaliser. Well, the generator's running on fumes, I think we're running on fumes as well. We've got another 15 minutes to go, and should the Bulls find a way back, it'll be 4-4, and we will be into extra time. Mitchell. Sorry, we just dropped out there for a minute. I think the generator was getting a refill. <laughs> we enjoyed this, though, Mitch. <laughs> it's been excellent. I mean, yeah, you come into these ties, especially as a neutral, and you like to see some goals and some drama, and, you know, we've had an abundance of, of all of it. So, throw in, it's a, it's a good atmosphere here. There's plenty of people along the sides of the fences, the grandstands. It's what the FFA Cup does. It's what it's brought to the nation. It's not just about the round of 32 and those matches where the A-League, this is where it begins. And these clubs harbour ambitions. Absolutely. You know, they want to be a part of it. And this, if they can't be a part of it at that stage, this is where they are part of That's it. That's right. And, you know, like I said, it might put together a tie.
And welcome back. <laughs> the magic of the cup, as we're saying, we're on a scissor lift and the generator just been refilled again so we can bring you the final 15 minutes. <laughs> Couldn't make it up, could you, Mitch? The, the players have had their water, we've had the fuel and the generator. We keep on going. We've got 15 minutes, maybe more, maybe a penalty what's, shootout. out. What's the booking time for the lights for us? <laughs> it's a good question. <laughs> it's the little things. Here's Mohamed Saravolo. He's asked a lot there. Gee whiz. And they're oh. dicing with death at the back. Oh my god. Opportunity for Gantz and he's fired it over. Dear oh dear. I would love to have the microphone on Jeremy Butler. Just then. <laughs> Plenty of cup ties to come, <laughs> and Mitch. I, and I look at him and he's got his head in his hands. Plenty of cup ties to come. As I said, live on the weekend, you can catch us in Kudamundra, Wagga City versus White Eagles. There's matches in round four to come as well. Tuggerong versus the Knights will be mentioned. Olympic v. Queenbian, Rhinos v. NU, and Tigers versus Panthers. And I understand the Tigers boys on tour in Argentina yeah. are tuning in, watching the match. How exciting. Loving what they're seeing over there. They've got a couple of games themselves coming up. And Mark Shields has just sent me a message saying the boys are keen and watching it live yeah, on TV over there. So... You've gone global, Mitch. I hope they're staying off the empanadas. I know how uh, how tough it is over there. The Malbecs, the empanadas. You'll be liking them on the empanadas. You've got to play them at some stage. I, 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 I encourage them to eat more. Eat as many empanadas <laughs> as you like, Tigers. The Malbec, you know, from Mendoza, get plenty of bottles into it. And Gabby Wilkes has taken his team on that tour, and it's a fantastic tour. 28 days, I think, or so they're over there for. It's a massively long tour, but I'm sure they're enjoying every minute of it. Oh, great experience for all the guys. It's, a, it's one of my favourite countries in the world, Argentina. And they were at Rosario Football Club on the weekends watching them and the crowd was almost as good as this one. <laughs> I mean, they're staying up or getting up early, I think, over there. Is that early? I don't know. Opposite, yeah, opposite. It should be the morning. Yeah. Anyway, it's a free kick here to the Blues. Hope you're enjoying it, guys, watching it in Argentina. Here's John O'Toole, a bit closer to home, lining up this free kick. Decent one towards the far post. Keepers come, missed oh. it, and somehow it's not gone in. It may have come off Ruiz and the defender, a combination of the two. And another set-piece opportunity. It's almost the one that could have killed off the tie. Can Tool deliver it again? Butler's got his head in his hands. Once more, swung towards the near post, and this one's not quite as good from John O'Toole. It's a great delivery. And again, the question is, who takes the goal kick? Well, the keeper wants it, the Haridis. He's not shirked his responsibilities, He's has not. He? The crowd giving him a bit of the birds. Decent contact on this one. Schaefer, though, wins the header. Mohamed's tool. A little bit of space. And he's found Schaefer. It's the right pass that doesn't. And he's dipped that one in. The keeper's in trouble again. <laughs> it looked for a moment as if the lights were going to cause him an issue. I mean, I'm, on one hand, I sit there and say, go to the corner flag. But then I suppose... <laughs> Salah finds Boyle. Lovely turn from Liam Boyle. Tries to take it in his stride. McCauley has dropped into a more defensive role. Looks for Salah. To take on his marker. Might drop here on the edge of the box for Matsula, but there's Mohamed again. And Tool, nice little nutmeg, but he's giving it away to Russell. McCauley again. Can he find a left-footed delivery? It's flat. And Adrian Russell picks it up. Schaefer's moving quite gingerly too now. He's, a, he's one of the original substitutes. You need him still putting in a shift. Is this where the extra man takes its toll? Good shot from distance from Salah, but McDonald's got too much experience to let that trouble him. Just looking a little tired now, Brenda Bella, that isn't extra player. Isn't it funny, that psychology though? Because they came in at extra time, absolutely flying. Fiharidis, you can hear the crowd getting on his back. The parochial home support down here. Have the balls got something left in the tank? Russell slides it through. For, look, too heavy for Liam Boyle. I like that run from Boyle, though. Peeled in, didn't he? Caused yeah. him, got himself a little bit of space. He's just got to hit that corner. Gunther taking his time and looking to send it. Tool had come short when Gunther wanted him to go deep. And this will be an easy pick up at the back for Wirchon. No, 
Now here's Russell. Ball into midfield and Matsula. Gets a second bite of it. Mulakis. Nicely done. Neat and tidy from the substitute. Chance for ball in behind. He strikes one as well and a decent effort and McDonald had to be down at his near post. I mean, I'd be suggesting, you know, can you get that ball under control? You've entered the 18 yard box. There's a tired centre back you're up against. It's a tired goalkeeper with that kick from McDonald. <laughs> Time the enemy for the Narrabunda. Just under 10 minutes to go. It's well pressed. This is questions. It's going to hold up. Ruiz is across there and he's won himself a free kick, and I'm sure there'll be plenty of time. Skuros, who's already on a yellow, of course. It's got to be at least the second. Is he going to get a second yeah, yellow? I think, I think so. he is. And he is going to walk gone. the second red card of the match. And that evens the numbers up. I think, he's a, I think that is just simply. When you consider where the, he's made the challenge, Mitch, you need, you know, I guess it's tiredness more than anything. But he, he knows he's on a yellow card. He knows he's committed one or two offences since getting that yellow card. If they stand any chance, you would have thought it had to be with their extra man advantage. Fatigue has obviously played a major part, but... Well, seven goals, two red cards. Brenda Bella hit the crossbar. Two tanks of fuel for the generator. <laughs> no, but they hit the post. We're still on this scissor lift in amongst the bushes. We're actually in a tree near enough. It's almost like a tree house, isn't it? It is. You can't stand too far. I mean, if Daniel left. turned the camera around, he'd be looking at a squirrel. <laughs> Do you have squirrels? Do we get squirrels? <laughs> <laughs> maybe that was a British thing. Right? <laughs> a possum, maybe. A possum. That's far more likely. <laughs> or a bat. Yeah. Definitely around this part. Oh, no. Oh, no. It's a misplaced pass. Russell's going to bust a gut to keep this in. Like I said, the uh, quality has certainly dropped off. They're running on fumes. Here's Mulakis. Gives it away. Matsula. Mulakis again. Oh, a bit short for Russell, but he short. does well. Here's Salah. Almost squeezed off. it through, and Mohammed comes sliding in and concedes a oh. free kick off his feet. Arabana might have wanted to play on there. Seven minutes left of extra time. Can Narabunda force a penalty shootout? The night we've had, who's decided? <laughs> it's not another goal. Both sides down to ten. Salah's going to drop this one in there. He's uh, under-hit it. Still might work for him, though. Just been close to a free kick, too. On the edge of the box, and Schaefer just sends that up the other end of the field. Here's Hajduk. Oh, he's left that short, and Tool might be in here. And he's been absolutely cleaned out. At the back by Mulakis, who's possibly going to see yellow. yellow. Card. And it is. It's a yellow card. It's a long way from goal, wasn't he? <laughs> and he was never getting onto the end of his own flick there. Uh, John Hunter was happy to take that co <laughs> that contact and, uh, and wait for the free kick in yellow card. There'll be in no rush to take this, Brenda Bella. Plenty of stretching still going on. And that's just in the commentary box. And now the, the other question is with numbers even again, can Brindabella go back to that style of retaining possession to diffuse this game as opposed to simply... Well, Buffy Arbo's pinged one from distance and, you know, at this stage... Not the worst idea. It's going to take a while for the ball boy to fetch it. And the Brindabella club will be going to slow down, mate. I would have thought I was going to say it to him. You know, Bunda looking to get that spare ball in play as soon as possible. Well, they've got five and a half minutes to save themselves on their FFA Cup run. Narabunda. Before tonight, as I said, they hadn't scored a goal in this round since, 20, uh, since 2015. They got three of them tonight, but it may not prove enough. Malakis, has he left that short? And he almost did, and it's going to fall for Tool. Mohamed's going up front with him, and Tool, though, slows it down. And Malakis makes up for his error. And he gives it away, it away again. again. <laughs> Leonard just clips that one down the corner. That's a decent ball, in fact. Just go to the corner flag. Tool. Yeah. Almost can hear you. Must have his uh, <laughs> comms on. 
Brendan Butler have the throw. We've got five minutes to play. Again, look at the fatigue. So, Narabunda dropped back, and then Brendan Butler let men follow him. I believe it is a three on two. Tool looking to dance his way into the penalty area, looking to get the decision, and he has. Now then, do they lift this into the penalty area or do they go short? I would take into account the number two goalkeeper and the match we've had, perhaps. Maybe swinging in there. They've been gone short, but they may go long this time. It's Tool. Been the epicentre of everything that Brinda Bella have done. He's still there. And this time the flag goes up for offsides. Well, Camera FC, like I say, waiting for the winners. Whoever it is are going to make life difficult for them. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. If they've got anyone standing by that <laughs> stage. I mean, they'll be heavy favourites, of course, but like I said, you've got two super awkward Schaefer, Well, Schaefer was in there looking for the free kick. Matsula. Tired pass for him. He's the managed to redeem himself. really descended. His <laughs> Here's Saravolo on his own just runs into a brick wall of three white shirts now Russell Mohamed challenges but he gives a free kick away and we almost wore that here from Schaefer McCauley behind the free kick now literally everyone in a white shirt is going forward they may as well they may as well They've got three back for no reason. But again, they've looked, look. Salah's dropped it into the penalty area. And it's been won by a blue shirt. And it's going to fall for Afi Arbo. Didn't, didn't utilise that free kick properly. A chance to get numbers in and around where the ball's going. Well, Jimmy Jamirak is the unused substitute. was screaming at the defenders to get forwards. We've got three minutes to play. Just chuck everybody up there. Yep. Here's Russell looking to load it into the penalty area. Swings it towards Matsula, but anywhere will do at the moment. Afiaba just gets rid. Malakis. Good turn from Boyle. Turn. Shooting chance from Liam Boyle, and McDonald saves well. And got enough of a body behind it. Certainly when they've found his feet, Boyle has been quite, quite effective. It just hasn't happened often enough. Decent stop that from McDonald at this stage. Tool tried to get away. And he's going to get himself a free kick for a shirt pull as we enter the final two minutes plus stoppage time of extra time. Could have easily picked himself up and booking for kicking the ball away. In contrast to Narabunda's urgency, Brenda Bella won't be sending too many men into this box, I don't think, with yeah, surely this less is than a couple minutes to go. The corner flag. Well, Ruiz, in fact, is lifted into the penalty. A real chance for Afiabo, who just ghosted in unmarked but made no contact. Lovely ball in from Chris Ruiz. Still alive for Brinda Bella. Tool. Once more. Tool with a strike. And Thea Haridis saves this one. Plays a bit of basketball and tries to feed Adrian Russell. Ruiz slides in and concedes a free kick. And the foul on Liam Boyle. We're into the final minutes of extra time. It's got to be everybody up, doesn't it? You oh. think, well, they've gone short. McCauley's got a bit of space. Brenda Bella weren't ready. Ball into the penalty. A real chance here. The header comes in. And oh, wow. I think that was a great It chance. came off the shoulder, in fact, of Boyle rather than his head. And he couldn't get enough on it. And is that the last chance that goes begging? I think that's a better chance than it even looked up here. From here. Didn't get the right contact, did he? Oh, wow. They're giving it straight back, though. And Hajduk... Salah, Russell, oh, he's given, he's given a free kick. This will be 30, 30 seconds. seconds, the final chance. Surely everybody in a white shirt into the penalty area. This is what cup football is all about, Mitch. There's no point having these two out on the left. They've got to get in. Salah is going to lift this one into the danger zone towards a far post and nobody in a white shirt can make contact. And that may be the end of the Bulls challenge. I think that's it just needed the contact but the chance was there moments earlier with Liam Boyle and he didn't get enough on the header in fact I think he misjudged it he may have come off his shoulder it was actually a fantastic fantastic ball into the box real oh chance no. goes begging McDonald's nearly knocked that out from a goal kick 
Here's Mohamed. This has got to go any moment now. Tool. We place 15 seconds of stoppage time. John Tool is after this, and Malakis needs to send this the other way. He won't have the time, and it's Brindabella Blues who progress in the FFA Cup. They were three 0 down. They were staring down the barrel, but a hat trick from John Tool and a winning goal in the first minute of extra time from Curtis Schaefer has turned this one on its head. Seven goals, two red cards. Well, it's had everything, Mitch. It, it, it really has. And and again, we said it at the time, and that that goal right on half time has proved absolutely decisive. Um, and that will be what's the most di disappointing for Narrabunda because prior to that, it was all the balls. This is the magic of the cup at this level, though, that we've talked about. Little things. Alex Belperia, their number one goalkeeper, couldn't get here because of work commitments. Their yeah. replacement goalie comes in, does his best, makes a couple of errors, unfortunately. They were 3 0 up. Matt Atkins was causing all sorts of problems. He's gone off injured at the start of the second half and, yeah. you know, challenging for a loose ball. These little things Those all add up, and then all of a sudden, moments. You, the momentum swung, and, and it's Brindabella that have pulled off a miracle, really. Absolutely. I mean, there's. Looking at that, it, it appears that they, they're the fitter side, but, I mean, Narrabunna really put them to the sword in that first 45. Well, thanks for your company tonight, Mitch. It's been an excellent match to be a part of here. Extra time in the FFA Cup qualifying. Great job for Danny on the uh, camera as well and feeding the generator as, as we've gone throughout the match. As I mentioned, Narrabunda goals from Matt Atkins on 16 minutes, Nick Mialakis on 32, and Atkins again on 38. Look to be home and host at 3-0. Brindabella, though, had other ideas. John O'Toole scoring from a goalkeeping error right in the end of the first half. And then two goals in five minutes from Toole with a quarter of an hour remaining. Got the bat to 3-3. Force extra time where Curtis Schaefer proved the match winner. The substitute racing clear to chip over the goalkeeper and win it. They were 3-0 down. They were 4-3 up. It's the magic of the cup. It's the Blues who advance and will play Canberra FC. It's finished. Brindabella Blues 4, Narrabunda 3.